everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Vampire the Masquerade, Transylvania Chronicles, here on Dork Tales. I'm your storyteller, Kelly. How are you seeing him? And I am really excited for this one. If you know Transylvania Chronicles, you know why. So we're going to be starting in just a minute, but before we do, uh, we should probably introduce the cast and give you some quick announcements. Let's go ahead and uh, let's embrace the cast, starting with Robin. Hello, uh, I'm Robin. I use she, her pronouns, and so does Teresa for now. Our uh, Teresa Dinescu, our um... <laughs> Zamisi. Oh boy, my brain. She, 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 she hurting. Uh, our our Zamisi Vavoid with her as I spent and I found out that I can I can ghoul animals so i spent uh xp to get the lovely bird that you see in the like main character art not the the, the screen ones but like the, the the group art uh to get her um raven a actual ghoul so i have now my actual companion bird who is named polnock which i already named but nice. uh yeah Polnock what does it mean? The Raven. Uh, it means... What did it mean? I know what it meant. Did it mean just know. Raven? Did I put... I That's looked so up Raven. in Hungarian. I think I used You Hungarian. named your dog, dog, your Raven, Raven. I think I did. That's uh, great. All right. Translate. What else is great I'll is... Out. What else is great is next to you, and it's Chris. Well, hello. I'm Chris. Uh, I use uh, he, him, or they, them pronouns. Uh, go by Diggy Blog in the chat. And uh, really excited to be here. I'm actually doing pretty well. Uh, been uh, getting ready for Orion's first birthday, which is tomorrow, and Chandra's. I saw that. Um, so happy birthday. But uh, uh, really excited to be here. Um, it's been too long since we last played. Um, I know it's only been a week, but. You both said that. It's, 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 it's been, been a week. far too long. <laughs> it, it's been far too long. Like, I, I was ready to go, like, the next day. Um, but, yeah, I will... Uh, s looking forward to seeing what happens. I'm playing Rinald, the... Um, priest. Priest is someone, anyway. Priest is something. <laughs> All right, uh, down beneath you, we've got Cal. Hello, it's me, Cal. Um, I, uh, yeah... I use he him pronouns. Uh, so does Bastion, and uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna milk it up. We're gonna ninja it up. Uh, ninja mode engaged. Uh, I, I nin, ninja mode is always engaged in this system. I love it actually. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't know if I'm like a, a the the sad clown or like the manic clown today. Which side of the uh, the drama comedy mask I'll be depends what happens. Well, I mean, we did uh, go after game and discuss some things, and I, I allowed your humanity role to be re-looked at because of some situations you talked to me about in private. So you actually didn't mm -hmm. lose a point of humanity. So you might be the sad clown. Sad clown, right? Sad because you do. Right, right. When your humanity lowers, you you. Um, resolve it that oh it had to be done. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. when you like feel shitty about it is when you actually pass the right. All right. Yeah, I like that. All right. So speaking of things we like, Jen. Hey, I'm Jen. I use she her pronouns, and I am playing El Elyona Fyodorov. I got to get her voice back and actually put my uh, fangs in, but I figured I'd at least do the intro without them today. Um, and uh, she is our gang girl. Of totally normalness, yes. Total normal gangrel. Yeah. Just honestly, definitely normal the, gangrel. <laughs> definitely normal. All right, so folks, before we begin, uh, a big thank you to our sponsor, Bookworm Games. Bookworm Games is not only a great place to get dice, it is going to be very soon a great place to get fungal familiar enamel pins. That's right, they're doing a backer kit for those very, very soon, right at the end of February, if I'm not mistaken. And we're going to be sure to share those with you. These are absolutely adorable pins, and odds are, if you like tabletop gaming, there is a good chance that you collect enamel pins. Honestly, like last night, it was four out of five players did. Um... I Robin just got a new pin, pin today, and it's 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 per, it's pertinent to this game. 
Okay. I I will trust her. But that is coming very soon, so definitely check them out, as well as all the other games. Oh, fair enough. It's a crow with a knife. That is very pertinent. The crow with a knife is from Sebastic. Who is a lovely nice. artist. Is that, is that the... Some, is that the, I know it's the same shop as the one I have. Mine's around somewhere, but I don't yeah. know if it's the same exact one. It's still. Cute. I think that's I what it. we got you. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, that, that arrived like in the mail too. Some prints, so it's just like I'm like yes, murder yep. verb. Yep. Bookworm is a fantastic shop, though. Honestly, they are incredibly quick, incredibly responsive. They um, really love what they do, and they're, they they include little extra details that no other shop does, like wax-sealed thank-you letters with every purchase. You also can get these fantastic World of Darkness-inspired dice that are made of actual gemstone. Absolutely love them. They're a fantastic group of people, and they love World of Darkness games. So if you love World of Darkness games, too, go check them out. Use code DORKTALES. You can save 15% off your order using code DORKTALES. Uh, thank you so much to Bookworm Games for being amazing and uh, for always being with us on our adventures into the dark. Uh, other things that I'm going to tell you right now is uh, I'm off next week. I'm taking a week off for my birthday from streaming. So uh, we are going to be doing a one-week pause uh, and then we'll be back on the whatever day that is. The I guess we're on a two-week break. Oh, yeah, yeah I'm, two gone. I'm gone for two weeks, so... That's right. So we're on a two week break. So I apologize. Uh, we'll be back on the 28th after tonight. So Oof. I know, I know, but I'm going to get you a good place tonight. You know, I know. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but uh, it is going we, to we be. We need to discuss if I need to bring this when I'm down. Just, you know, from the thing that we talked about. Oh, yeah, the thing. The thing with Cusco. Cusco's thing. Cusco's uh, thing. When is my birthday? Wouldn't you like to know, Professor Multiverse? You're trying to... Identity theft is not a joke. Um, but, yeah. Uh, so I'm taking some time off for my birthday, which uh, is going to be during stream on Monday. So come enjoy us uh, and, and uh, enjoy Fandelver and Below on Monday. All right. So, folks, without further ado, we are going to be hopping into the Transylvania Chronicles, Episode 3, On the Road. After, after murdering Roland in a den of iniquity, you made your way back to the safe house, and it was there that you rested for the night. Well, for the day, I suppose I should say. Taking some time to gather all of the supplies that you need for your travel, you eventually made your way back out to where your ghouls and your equipment were waiting outside of the walls of Pest. Now I want to know, is there anything that you're doing before you head toward um, Klausenberg and eventually toward the Tehuda Pass? Uh, I guess I have to go figure out how I'm bringing my thing, my, 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 my 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 extra belonging that i from my home i guess if Your not jar of just dirt? uh my jar of dirt yep okay well that's easy enough to carry inside of your um inside of your belongings and i would imagine that you, it's several handfuls if i'm not mistaken oh yes no no i wasn't mentioning that i mean the thing that i've left at my at my house in in the cellar i think i have to deal with that at some point oh i assumed that that was inside of your wagon in a box oh sure yeah 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 along with several yeah, handfuls of earth yeah okay so that sounds good that sounds good so as you make your way outside of the walls of pest thunder rolls overhead an april storm begins to shower down upon you and soon you will make it to where your wagons are there you will see that there are several guards talking casually with the men that you had been assigned as well as your ghouls these appear to be the men that you had acquired from your patron joining you as well are the girls that you have brought with you from the feeding. Well, at least two of them, if I'm not mistaken. No? 
Rain splatters down around you, turning the ground into mud. It's such a shame that uh, we couldn't save all three of the girls. Just the two. I wonder what happened to that poor soul. Six guardsmen turn as you approach, raise a hand in greeting. The largest, a man with a well-trimmed beard and fierce eyebrows, one of which is bisected by a vicious scar that dances over his cheek as well, takes a step forward and speaks to you in, well, deep but understandable, Mygar. You are the ones that we were sent to protect, yes? Yes. Your master is most generous. Yes, he is. I am Lucian. I am the captain of this small militia that will go with you. Antonio, Ivan, Brogan, Igmar. And that, the little one with the blonde hair over there, is Peter. We will see you safely to the end of your journey and protect you at this pace. Wonderful. We thank you for your service. Now, um, Kelly, there were, they, we were going to be given supplies, or what form is that taking? I want to inspect what uh, additional things that we have going with us. Sure, go ahead. Um, so, looking around the site, give me a perception and investigation or perception and alertness roll just to search your belongings three wagons sit there uh, and uh, one what yeah. go ahead Jen oh I was just gonna say gonna ask if uh, if I was still carrying uh, Shahrazina. Uh she would have been able to walk now okay. and would be accompanying you accordingly if you'd allow it Uh, as you look around, Reynald, you will see that there is a strong box in one of the uh, in one of the carts, with a large lock on the front of it. Do you need into the box? That is the librum that you were promised. No, no, just wanting to make sure I know which one needs protecting. Yes. But perhaps we should spread it out. As you will. And uh, Lucian will reach under his shirt and produce a key and hand it to you. We are ready to leave at any notice. How much is in the box? Uh... So they don't give a specific amount, but it is enough Librum Librum to pay the initial cost of hiring stonemasons and carpenters. So seems that uh, seems pretty good. Cash money. Cash money. Many many coins. I'm going to bring the strong box over to uh, the others. Be like. Do we want to just leave this all in one cart? Um, I have a little experience in the matter, and uh, that might not be the smartest idea. I agree. If a tragedy befalls a cart, having all of our coins in one cart would be too easy to steal, betray, lose. I agree. I think we should all take some. That way we're all responsible to each other as well. I think that is most wise, Lady Teresa. We have amalgamated your belongings as well. At least, we have tried to, with only three cats to take you out there. We ha have to consolidate somewhat, my lords and ladies. There was some uh, disagreement about such a thing. And 
as he says that, he's going to glance over his shoulder, and you're going to see that uh, Peter, the youngest, blondest of them, uh, is nursing a split lip and a very swollen eye. If anybody wants to make me a perception and empathy roll, you can uh, do a vibe check. Yeah, could I uh, give him the old soul look for a little bit? That'll be sure. one, sir. Only one? Perception and empathy. Actually, I can do perception and empathy. I have empathy. I bought a dot of empathy last time, guys. I like that I'm you're just like you're, you're doing the Auspex trick of immediately like just reaching for your Auspex gun. Yep. Mm -hmm. Zero for me. Zero for you. You don't care about. I rolled these a people. ten and a one. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> uh, I got one because I rolled a, <laughs> I rolled a one in there, so only one. Okay, three. Uh, Bastion, you're going to immediately see there is a, there is tension between a tall, dark-haired man standing over by one of the one of the wagons, and the group of ghoul guardsmen. You'll recognize him immediately as well as one of Teresa's servants. He's wiping the knuckles of his hand, not because they're hurt or bloodied, but because he's making a show of his strength. He keeps and his he's... eyes set on the little man and is standing protectively in front of the wagon that he is in front of. The rest of you will notice that uh, the younger man is shooting a um, daggers at Dominic just glaring at him while holding his bruised face. Uh, Lucian, uh, you've already made what arrangements you can, because I, there's nothing too particular in the, the cart I was in. I'm happy to share with someone else, if it'll keep the peace. Whatever Lord wishes. I would suggest we head out soon, however. Teresa will make her way over to Dominic. As you approach, he will immediately change posture, bowing his head and leaning into you. I'm sorry. He wanted to move the box. I told him no, and he said that if it's just an eye and a lip. It was very good, Dominic. Here, and she'll take his hand, and she'll gently kiss where there's no no actual wound from hitting him, but she'll kiss where he punched with his knuckles. He shivers at your touch, and thank you. I was worried that you would be angry. No. You are very right. And I want you to keep that anger and protect all. Protect my belongings at all what cost. You are yes, a very, very good servant. Thank you. Thank you, my lady. Clara is watching over it now. Good. He'll puff out his chest at your approval, putting a hand to steady the blade at his hip. Come now, we should all be off, shouldn't we? Want to make quick work? We have a long ride ahead of us. Hey, Kelly. Yes. Can I do some sort of like... Uh... Some sort of check where I'm... Basically, I want to... Uh, I'm so familiar with the the wilderness and like the way we're traveling. I just want mm. to have a general sense of like this weather patterns and how the forest is doing that sort of thing. Absolutely, yeah, you totally can. Um, go ahead and make me a an intelligence and survival or a perception and survival. Can you aid people in this game? You can, uh, but you need to do it before they roll. Um, and also, will, would Eliona allow herself to be assisted? 
No. Or would she just... <laughs> okay. Uh, well, this is going on, Kelly. I want to divvy up the... Um, uh, sorry, it's Librum? Lib Librum, the yeah. Librum. L-I-B-R-U-M. Um, into four portions, and I'm going to put uh, a portion that's going to Eleona noticeably more uh, than the others, uh, as well as uh, Teresa's as well, and then uh, giving Bastion and I kind of an equal, like, lesser amount, because I feel like those two are much more capable of protecting it than <laughs> I am. So. All right, sounds good. All right, um, Eleona. You're not difficulty, wrong. difficulty six? Difficulty six. Uh, five successes. Five successes. All right. So this weather is, it's not going to be particularly bad, but it is going to be, you're not noticing anything strange. Spring rains are fairly common in this part of the Carpathians. And as you are heading through, it is probably a good idea to stick to the roads with these carts. These wagons are going to provide you plenty of shelter during the day, or at least a little bit of shade under which you can earth meld. That said, earth melding does cost blood. And on a trip like this, you are going to want to preserve as much blood as you can. Oh, um, on that note, what is the date today? Uh, it is... Uh, so it's it's February 7th, 2024. Um, we gotcha. met on <laughs> April 15th, right? So it's April 16th. Or, yeah. 16th, perfect. Thank you. Uh, so, on April 16th now, uh, you are going to begin your journey. Unless there's anything else you want to do before you depart. Bastion? Uh, I guess I have a ghoul now. <laughs> um, Eliona is going to um, spend the first like, bunch of travel time as basically a scout. Okay. On her feet. Like, she's not riding a horse. She's just... I'm either until she go... can't keep up or is just... I'm going to go with her. Done. <laughs> okay. As so... scouting with her. I'll have Paul so actually, flying in to keep Would you let out. Bastion just walk accompany you? If you're coming, you best be quiet. <laughs> I can be quieter than a mouse. If you want, I can pretend I'm not even here. That would be and, best. And um, in between walking, kind of like by a tree, uh, Bastion's just gonna disappear. But still, like, alongside Aliona and uh, scouting. Okay. Um, I want to, uh, over the course of the journey, um, I, I want to be sitting up with one of the dragons, not the front one, actually, mm. maybe the middle one, um, okay. and kind of just quietly directing the guards um, more kind of like uh, oh that's a good ambush position up ahead 20 yards to the left like and just like pointing things out and basically using um, I want to do leadership role uh, charisma okay. and leadership to give them um, all of the guards a minus one difficulty on their next actions okay that sounds good so um, why don't we go ahead and discuss this real quick because you're going to be traveling in the group so I have Three wagons traveling. Who is in the front wagon? So, Reynald, you said yourself? Uh, I'm just going to uh, try for the middle. For middle, okay. Who would be in the front? Uh, Teresa can be in the front. Okay. Um, who will be in the back? So, Bastion and Reynald, we're going to share one? I'll yeah. share with whoever. Or all. Like, not a problem. Okay, which means that, Eliona, would you be traveling with the back one when you needed to? When I needed to, yeah. Okay. 
So I'll say that you are there, or perhaps, would you travel in front or behind the convoy? In front, scouting. Okay. All right, sounds good. Uh, then for the ghouls, we are going to have uh, two ghouls flanking the front, because that is probably smart. Then two at the junction point between each cart. And then you also had four servants, uh, which are going to be driving the carts, respectively. Uh, with two at the back cart, so that there is someone watching the end. Uh, and then besides that, Dominic and Clara will be in Teresa's car. Then Felix and Carl will probably be either marching alongside or in your car, if needed. And then besides that, I would say that most of the women that are traveling with you would probably be in the third car, just for space. So the uh, the two go the two ladies and uh, and uh, your new friend Sherezina uh, should be out there as well, just because there's more room in that one. Okay. So, so if someone needs to, Dominic can probably walk outside as well, and then if another mm -hmm. lady needs to come up with Teresa as well. Sure. You could absolutely have uh, Sherezina up there uh, with you. Sherezina or Cece. Or Cece, yeah. Because Cece's yeah. your ghoul, right? Yeah, Cece's the one I ghouled. Okay, so we'll say, we'll say that uh, Sherezina is back there, plus um, Rosalina. Okay, sounds good. So, uh, Chris, make that roll for me. Uh, four. Four successes? All right, that'll give them a minus one off of any roll that they have coming up. Um, so, what I'd like you to do real quick is we are going to do a hunting roll to see how much blood you can gain from the environment as you are traveling. If you are feeding on animals, this will be a slightly less difficult roll. So, Aliona, I'm assuming that you're going to be feeding off animals. Are you going to be hunting animals to provide for the group? Or just yourself? I will if if requested to. Okay. But I don't think she'll think of it on her own because most of the time she knows Kindred won't uh, won't drink from animals. All right, sounds good. So, starting with people who are hunting animals, uh, go ahead and assemble a pool. I would say that you could use um, you could use wits and survival as your rule as your role. Um, so we're going to say that this is going to be for um, what I'm going to want is I want three successes to have a decent blood pool. We're just going to do this as a single roll to see how you do over the week. Uh, with hunting for animals over that time and keeping your blood pool up, that's going to be at a difficulty of seven. Okay. If you are drinking um, off... Sorry, quick, quick question. Uh, mm -hmm. Can I use my tracking specialty? Yes. Okay. Okay. So if you are eating off of people exclusively or are eating off of either the servants here or your ghouls or the... Uh, the blood dolled ghouls that you're bringing with you. You are going to have a little bit of a break, but they will be weakened for the journey. Okay, if you are trying to eat from the peasantry outside, we can assemble a different role for you to creep away and, and feed in the night, for example, at local farmsteads. That would probably be a stealth and mm, probably a stealth and dexterity role to do that. If you were going to just sneak into their houses, if you are going to use dominate to basically pass farmers and say, hey, you come here out of your house, I'm going to drink you, then that is going to be a different role as well. So, Renald and Teresa, I think I know what Bastion and Eliona are going to do. So what is your method? Um, well, I don't have stealth. Um, my skills are my weak point. And I put them so, all into body craft and animal ken. So, so uh, what would you be going about doing? Um, I think she would go about by trying to pull the oh, no, 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 
poor old lady, my wagon's broken down. I need some help from a big, strong farmer to come. Okay. My and wagon's you, been done up the way. You are going to be using manipulation and subterfuge on this. Um, I'll give you the difficulty in just a second. And then, mm -hmm. Chris, what is Reynald doing? Uh, Reynald is doing something similar uh, as uh, uh, maybe combinations of dominate when needed. And um, okay. But I'm, I'm a priest. I, okay. I can... Find, then give uh, me manipulation and subterfuge as well. Uh, however, due to the length of the journey that we're doing here, the way it's going to be, Elioni, you're rolling a difficulty seven. Bastian, you're rolling a difficulty eight, and Renald and Teresa, you're rolling a difficulty nine. Cool. I'm gonna spend a willpower. Okay, you may spend a willpower on this. All right, I'm gonna do that too. Then sounds good. Uh, on a side note, uh, I do mm -hmm. have. I don't know if this affects the blood pool at the end, but I do have efficient digestion. It will. Okay, thank you for reminding me that you have that. Oh, yeah, do I have any? So on the first part of my roll, I rolled four tens. <laughs> okay, you're full. Oh. And then Two. I rolled another ten and three more successes oh. after I rerolled that last time. I got <laughs> one success from the willpower. I rolled... I rolled a 10 and a 1, okay. and then the other two dice don't care. I got I okay. two so and then one. one from willpower. Okay, sounds good. Uh, then, Cal, how did Bastion do? Three successes? Okay. So, if you got three successes, you are going into this game with ten points of blood. If you got... Jen, you're full. <laughs> um, Chris, uh, you are going to be sitting at... Uh, let's say you're sitting at 13. 13? Okay. Because of efficient digestion. Teresa. Uh, so... Uh, unless you are feeding off of... I was going to say, if Teresa is not successful later in the week, she will uh, weaken Clara and Cece to sustain okay. blood. So, here's the deal. You're going to be starting off at five blood tonight. Woofsies. So, how many points are you taking off of Clara or Cece? Uh, humans have the same amount of health levels as we do, right? Basically, yeah. But you, uh, theoretically, a human has 10 points of blood, and they can survive usually having three or four taken from them. Four might wound them. Okay, I will take three of each. So I'll do another six. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. <clears throat> so. The trip is long. Your horses and wagons move swiftly across the eastern border of Transylvania in about three weeks. The guards advise that moving any faster would defeat the purpose, as soon enough you would find yourself facing the frozen or damaged passes from the previous winter. But in time, you make it across. The Carpathians now unlocked as you move into May. There is a little bit of difficulty finding sufficient vessels. There's no blood to waste frivolously, except for Aljona, who apparently is a huntress of the highest order and um, can s afford to use earth meld every day if she wishes. If we've stopped for like the day kind of thing, then yeah, she'll earth melt because she does not want to be in that, in those carts. But mm -hmm. if we're planning on traveling at like through the day, through the day, then mm -hmm. uh, then she'll obviously have to stay in there. <laughs> and you absolutely are because it's the best way to reach. If you only traveled at night, this would be a very very long trip indeed. Instead, you move during the day, and once you. <laughs> Once you cross into Transylvania, the tedium and discomfort of the trip, of nights of just riding in the darkness, they drain you. You find yourselves getting a bit short. Feeding becomes difficult as the local peasants act uniformly terrified of you, of 
the great lords who travel the winds of night. Occasionally, you find yourself stopping at a small hamlet or village, where what counts as nobles in this part of Transylvania are easy enough to call out and bend to your will, securing a bit of a beverage or two. But soon enough, you find yourselves passing on your way to Klausenberg. The night that you reach Klausenberg is after a particularly awful day of travel for your retainers. The rain has not let up for nearly 20 hours. You remember falling asleep as day broke with the sound of thunder overhead, and it wakes you as night falls. Your horses are exhausted. You can smell the wet horse flesh through the canvas of your wagons. In front of you, you can hear some of the cheap armor on the ghouls creak in the rain as they continue to march or ride. But you've made it, and in the distance you can see that there is a there's a wall. It's not much ahead of you. The city in front of you will is little more than a few muddy streets scattered between wooden houses and straw and daub hovels. As you each awaken that night. Lucian will call back. My lords, we have reached. We are at the edge of Klausenberg. Might we rest inside for the night? The men could use food and a bit of shelter from this pissing rain. I'll try and look at whoever else is uh, around. Uh, and meet their gaze and like perhaps that's a good idea if there are no objections I see no objections you've proven yourself quite quite worthy quite supportive your men deserve a dry roof I see no issue Thank you, my lady, my lord. All right, men. Onward. We sleep by a fire tonight. The horses are kicked back into a bit of a trot. And soon enough, you find yourselves heading in to Klausenberg. A few small shops lie in the main street, which has a dilapidated church at one end. However, for any of you who are taking a moment to look out at this area, you're going to notice that there is one thing about this town that is a bit different than you expected. Despite the simple accommodations and bare essentials that the villagers rely upon, the whole town is surrounded by a stout stone wall, anchored by a centrally placed stone keep. As you approach the front gate, a pair of guards step out and bark in Romanian. What do you want? Just coming to rest for the night. We don't need any travelers through here. Um, Eliona will step forward and I don't know if you saw it in our private chat about I my did. background dot. I did. Cool. She's going to step forward and be like, they are with me. Let them through. Make me a uh, make me a charisma and ooh, leadership intimidation. What do you got? Intimidation. She's doing it with intimidation. For sure. Let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, give it to me at a difficulty of uh, difficulty of five. One of them is going to raise a torch close enough that you feel your beast just begin to prickle a bit as the light touches your face. Mm -hmm. Sorry, what was the difficulty? 
difficulty of six. Uh, that's three successes. The guardsman will pale behind his dark, dripping mustache. Yes, uh, you can head inside. Um, do you have anything to declare? Taxable goods? None that are staying. Move along. They step out of the way and let the carts through. She's going to linger for a moment, lay a hand on the the guard that let them through, and um, and will say, "Consider your sister's debt paid." Um. Huntress, he does not wish to have guests inside of the city walls. He will whisper into your ear. I will handle him. You, if he makes a fuss, send him to me. I see. It will not. Kelly. Yes. Um, I think going into the city, uh, mm -hmm. I'm get, and and with that interaction of, of the guards not necessarily wanting travelers, uh, I'm going to spend a point of blood to uh, act to build my ears of the bat. Ears of the bat. Oh, ears of the bat. So I must uh, spend a blood point or all in in intelligence and the Medisa. Okay. Difficulty of seven. Eliona. That was impressive. Thank you. They know me around here. No doubt. For good or for ill. Fierce reputation precedes you. You have much mm. ear of the bat. <laughs> I have so much ear. Oh I my god! So much I looked ears. away for a second. And I looked back, and there were five successes worth of bat ears. Yeah, I, I rolled two tens, which is so unfortunate. I need to. Okay. But yes, yeah, cool. so much, much ear, much bat. Much ear, much bat. All right. Uh, so you are going to definitely be able to overhear Renald and uh, and Eliona's conversation right there. Saying yeah. that they know me here. Yeah. And probably the at least the tail end of that, that guard conversation. <laughs> Possibly, yeah. yeah. I didn't want to assume that, but you definitely like you, you let's say you hear if he complains, send him to me. Mm-hmm. Mm hmm Perfect. So you make your way inside of this pitiful little town. To call it a city is an insult to cities like Pest, but you make your way in. There is a single inn here, called the Sign of the Travelers. As you approach, you can see that it doesn't appear particularly busy at the moment. It's still early evening, not even eight o'clock. So, it could be a good place to stop. Your men are eyeing it hungrily. Do you head there, or do you go about do some other shopping in town? Uh, Eliona, you said you were familiar. Is this the best place they have? It is the only place. Then it is. I didn't realize that you, uh... You stayed around here. You seem much more of a in the forest all the time kind of woman. Oh, that is where I keep my home. <laughs> but the people here, they they wish for cures and good hunting. They come to me. They see you like 
some sort of witch of some sort. <laughs> some sort indeed. Witchcraft. <laughs> Interesting. They're good people, though. Are they? Are they wary? Are they? Are these people eager to burn, is what I'm asking. No, they are simple people living hard lives. And they don't give me any trouble. <laughs> Wonderful. Perhaps um, with the reputation of Eliona, we should uh, make leave the next night, give everyone a full day to rest, recuperate longer than just the evening. This might be one of the few places where we're able to do such a thing along the rest of the way. Possibly. I don't know the accommodations very well. Okay. But let us at least get the men a night of rest. And she'll um she'll actually go into the end. She's she seems way more comfortable here than she did in uh in Buddha or Hest. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. The doors open, revealing a fairly humble well, a humble hovel of an inn. This is it's clean enough, but it's old. The surfaces once were covered in splinters that have been worn down by elbows and old rags over the gears. There are stools placed throughout that wobble slightly when you sit on them, and a large, bald tavern keeper who looks at you as you approach and strokes his beard. He looks uncomfortable, but recognizes Eliona. Can I get everybody to make me a perception and empathy roll? To get a vibe. Yes. Vibe Ooh, check. can I use my vibes? Excellency. Yep. Yeah, does I, I, in intuitive? Apply? I'll allow intuitive. Everything's fine. This is just completely normal. No bad vibes. Uh, do you say alertness or awareness, Kelly? This is uh, alert. Empathy. Oh, me. This is empathy. Empathy, sorry. I'm... I'm... Blay. Blay. <laughs> Blay. All right, we're going to go for a difficulty of six. Pretty basic in here. Ooh, that's Ooh. nice. Me. Two. Five. Five successes. All right, yeah. Teresa. Was that seven? How many How many successes are you holding? Six. Is that six? Six. Okay. Because well, you were like, you were flashing six. like gang signs. All right, <laughs> and Renault? Zero. Okay, good. All right. <laughs> so I said everything's fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Eliona, taking a step inside, you are going to notice that the, the tavern keeper gives you a look that is slightly discomforted. There's a moment of recognition, but then as others follow you in, the discomfort sets in. Renald, you were just happy to get out of the rain, but the other two of you, Bastian and Teresa, you are going to hear a bit of muttering as you enter, and that moment where everything stops for just three heartbeats as you enter. As everyone turns and looks at you, you get the immediate sense that you are not welcome here. Which is exactly counter to what Eliona suggested. Oh, Yona's just like, this is normal, guys. <laughs> I always feel unwelcome. <laughs> yeah, oh god. <laughs> the tavern keeper <laughs> takes a look at you. Hello. Greetings. Here for food? Food and... Rooms for the men 
and women. The inn is full. Do you have any available? No, we do not. Hmm. Inn is full, stables are full. But there's another village down the way. You know it, right? Very comfortable. Hmm. We have many coins. I cannot sure sell you, you a room that does not exist. Does it look full? El Yona is going to lean in. <laughs> it does not look full. El Yona leans in. I know you are lying. But I think I know why. Tell me, am I correct? He sniffs and nods twice into his burly chest. Hmm. Let them stay for food. I will attempt to sort out rooms. Giving him a bit of a knowing look. <laughs> I have some food I can share, guess. Stew. Hmm. Bit of old goulash, mayhap. If that would please, milady, my lords. Now with it will warm all the people. <laughs> oh, I was gonna yeah, ask was with Aliona's. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, I was gonna say, I'm like, if Aliona's so good at her freaking hunting rolls, I wonder if we have some extra meat we can offer. <laughs> well, um, Al Aliona will, will kind of nod and say, it will do to warm, to warm them. I will bring some gifts. All right, you come inside. You can have some meat. You can have some some little bit of ale for coin. I have leftovers at pot, but still no room, but food. Thank you very much. You kind sir. <sighs> he goes and starts dishing out bowls of stew. The Gould guardsmen and the rest. Your retinue eagerly slurps down and begins finger shoveling the stew into their mouths. It's not particularly warm, mostly a stew of turnips and a little bit of, oh God, what would it be? Probably pork in this area. Something that just can survive on anything. Mushrooms and anything to thicken the broth that there is, probably with some very, very dry bread. When he's away getting the stew, Therese mm -hmm. is going to look at Aliona and be like, What is going on here? You seem to know? <sighs> I may be known here, but I am not in power here. I may have to go solve a problem. Might we be of assistance? Not with this particular problem. I'm safe enough. And if, we'll if, return with more meat for the inn. If I may. Hmm. This problem isn't necessarily yours alone, is it? Or is it a problem for all of us? If perhaps we can... It, become, it becomes more problematic if you join. Understood. But uh, whether we enjoy each other's company or not, if we can be assistance in this matter, take, let us know. Take Polnock with you. He's just a simple raven. 
but he will come to me if there's an issue. That way we can know if you need assistance. I want to belong. And Eliona's gonna leave. <laughs> and I'm gonna Ter turn to the tavern keeper. <laughs> Teresa will uh, leave the door, uh, bird call for Ponyok, Ponok, and then tell him to follow and be with Aliona, and then if there's any problems, come. And he will fly off to go do his job. Uh, as that occurs, the rest of you who are inside of the tavern right now, so you say you turn to the tavern, tavern keeper there. What do you do? I'm just going to watch him for a little while. Uh, just like sort of sit at the bar and just watch him as he's doing things and once everything is kind of settled, I might start trying to uh, strike up a conversation with him. I want to make sure everyone's fed first, though. He will go and take care of everyone, feeding them accordingly. He keeps an eye on you, and you're not really noticing because of that role before, but Bastian and Teresa are going to notice that he keeps an eye on each of you, but also keeps an eye on a couple of men that were already inside of this tavern. Each of them sits near a flaming torch in a sconce on the wall. It has, well, various pieces of equipment near them. A cudgel, a woodcutter that brought an axe in. They eat and drink silently, staring ahead Oh, just that's watching. weird. I was gonna say, I'm bringing out the Auspex gun. I'm bringing out the Auspex gun. Right, do it. Make me a perception and empathy roll difficulty eight. Cat. Perception and empathy. Oh. What'd you get? One canceled out a 10, so that's only one success. 10. You look at them, tension. They are waiting as if something is going to happen. They're on guard. Therese is going to mutter under her breath to Reynald. They're waiting for something. They're looking at us. And them. I did not feel comfortable. We might have to fight. Make me a uh, wits and empathy roll. Oh, Both of you can. What's, what's my difficulty? It's difficulty seven. One. One as well. You could probably start a fight. Alternatively, it, there is an easier option. Just they leave, yeah. You. Just leave. Like, if they don't want yeah. you here, you can just go. Yeah, no, I'm just more, more worried about our people that are eating. It doesn't look like they've poisoned anything. Okay. There you could just way. wait for them to eat and then, had, and then bail. Yeah, I think that's what... Teresa will do is kind of right. just wait and then get the fuck out. All Ask right. the uh, barkeep what his barkeep, what is mm. your name? Mikhail. Mikhail. What is yours, priest? Renault. Are you a god fearing man? It is hard to live in Transylvania and not fear God. Good. Good to hear. Now, I... I want to be, uh... Honest with you for a moment, if I may. Yes. When Eliona comes back, I hope that, uh... 
depending on how uh, her trip goes, that we can either stay here peacefully or leave peacefully. We have no intention of causing a disturbance as long as none is caused for us. Do you understand? If, yes, if I may, priest. He leans in. Enjoy your meal, and there is no problem. Meanwhile, swapping outside. Eliona, we head to you, moving among the the hovels. Klausenberg, where are you headed? Um, first, she's heading to um, essentially her domain, which is a little hut in the in the middle of the forest near town. Okay. Um, she heads there mostly to grab a few things. Sounds um, good. And and just like putter around collecting some stuff. It's it's the simplest little hut you ever did see. Mm -hmm. Um, she doesn't need much, but, uh, <laughs> inside there's like herbs hanging and drying and, uh, flowers. And there's like one of those, uh, things you stretch, uh, animal skin on to like tan it and to, and to dry it outside. Um, well, actually mm -hmm. that one's inside because rain at this time of year and she didn't know how long she'd be gone um and there's all sorts of tools everywhere but they all look um less than professionally made <laughs> okay and she'll just go around she's she's mostly gathering some herbs um she checks on the the skin to see if it's dried enough and collects a few things that you know somebody might think are a bit frivolous but she has a plan <laughs> and then she'll she'll head out kind of deeper into the woods sounds good as you're doing this bastian you are just following an obfuscate right yeah Okay, cool. So you find yourself in in your vestments and your outfit, kind of trudging through these these ancient forests in the Carpathians, um, almost sliding down the side of muddy hills that Alyona walks with grace, climbing up rocky cre uh, crevices and around this ancient hut. And then you continue to follow her as she heads further into the woods. Are you looking for him, Alyona? Um, I'm looking for signs of him. Okay. And if I find them, I'm going to try and track them. But I'm okay. also keeping an eye out because I do want to bring back, like, a good deer or something for, for the inn. That sounds good to um, me. Why don't we go ahead and let's make this a roll. So make me do a tracking okay. roll. And we're okay. going to do this at two difficulties. What we're going to do is we're going to do this at difficulty of eight for tracking him. Difficulty of seven for hunting prey at night. And one is going to be a contested roll. The other is not. Your tracking specialty will apply, though. You know what? I don't think you're going to find a trace of him. I'm just going to say that right now. Fair. I mean, I did get um, four successes at eight. Cool. I got I got five. <laughs> cool. Yeah. But it was closer than you might it think. It was pretty damn close. I'm actually, for a, for a couple of times, you were going to see like little traces, like scratch marks on trees or mm -hmm. a deer that has been uh, exsanguinated lying on the ground and having about a day's worth of rot in it. Yeah, so not ideal to take back. Okay. Um, However, with that mm -hmm. role, you, what were you trying to hunt? Um, sorry, could you repeat that? Just the... What are you trying to hunt to, uh, to bring back to the inn? 
Um, specifically, like, a large uh, meat animal that would okay. be in the area. I, I'm looking for large because I want it to be a good gift. Um, I did get uh, seven success, or no, sorry, six successes at seven. What what kind of animal would suit you? <laughs> you have your pick of the litter. Would you like to bring back a bear? Um, don't bring back a bear. <laughs> um, you probably could bring no, back a small bring black bear. No, I, I I think that would be a, a little much. Um, but uh, something you, like like a sizable male deer or a deer or a elk boar, or, or boar, a boar, boar would be great. Boars are okay. vicious fuckers. <laughs> they are vicious fuckers, but with a seven success tracking, I don't think you're going to have much of a problem with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um. Also, uh, in the kind of when she's in the deep woods. If she's not seeing any sign of him, um, she is going to stop and uh, just, just animals and takes a point of blood, right? Mm -hmm. uh, not talking, oh, no, but talking. summoning does. Summoning does, but not talking. Cool. Um, she is going to use uh, animalism to howl in, like, howl like a wolf. Um in the hopes that he'll recognize and come find her, but she will continue hunting for the boar at that point. That sounds good. Why don't you go ahead and uh, make me a, you know what, you have a something good happens. I'm gonna spend that. <clears throat> you hunt the boar. And as you are doing that, uh, Bastion, you're watching her stalk this boar as it kind of roots around in the woods for various things to eat. Truffles, mushrooms of other types, uh, bits of vegetation. And she howls before she begins to stalk this creature. And as she pounces on it, stabs it through the neck with a knife? Yeah. Yeah, she's just hunting conventionally. Okay. It's a clean stab, and it goes down quickly. However, as it does, there is a shifting in the underbrush, almost indetectable. Without Auspex, you would have no way of even detecting it at all. And then... There is a crunching noise. A man is standing at the edge of a clearing. He has feline eyes and a feral snout. He's dressed in rough, dark clothes, a long woolen coat, and a faded shirt and breeches. His boots are caked in... His boots are caked in mud. And he carries a bow and arrows. He stands at the edge of the clearing that the boar dies in. And looks at Alyona. Blood is caking your hands, Alyona. You have called for me. You came. <laughs> I wasn't sure you would. I was not going to. Hmm. <laughs> you are traveling with the interlopers. Yes. You should turn around and go. They are not welcome here. I do not want the cities to move into my wilderness. I don't want that either. But I had no choice. Right. 
Valeska de- demanded it of me. The witch. Yes. You waste your time with superstition. But your kill was clean. If you continue on your path, I can't tell you what will happen to you. If you really believe in this cause, prove it to me. Through fire and blood. Will you try to stop us? Yes. <laughs> and if you survive, I will be very impressed. <laughs> if you want to bring the influence of the Lords into my Transylvania, you will earn it. Are we understood? We are understood. I will be pleased if you do not die. As will I. Do not take your displeasure out on the town. I have told them not to offer succor to travelers. <laughs> yes, and I convinced them otherwise. And yet I should not take out my anger on them for that. You undermine no. me. Take your anger out on me instead. I will, when the time is right. Tell Mikhail, <laughs> tell Mikhail you can sleep in the stables. Enjoy one last night of comfort, city dwellers. <laughs> you call me a city dweller. You travel with them, don't you? <laughs> or are you a dog? I am no one's pet. We shall see. We shall see, child. shall and he will turn and you will watch Mitru turn and step into the darkness Eliona will shake off the tension perfect and uh uh She'll bleed the boar dry in a hunter's way mm -hmm. so that they don't have to do it in town. Sounds good. And she will carry it back to town. Okay. Bastion, are you doing anything while this is occurring? Meh. Okay, cool. <laughs> you good? You good? <laughs> you good, right. fam? Yeah, good fam. All right. You head back in. 
It takes about an hour for the entire event to move into the woods, to hunt the boar, to meet Mitru in return, perhaps a little longer. We cut back to the tavern as you enter. A bit of tension is in the air. The stew has been completely demolished. And as you are preparing to part, the men are looking around a little warily. The door is going to burst open. And Eliona will enter. Uh, what's your strength, Eliona? Uh, just normally, it's three. Okay. So are you dragging this boar behind you? I'm, I'm assuming um, this boar probably weighs about 250 pounds at least, even when it's gutted. Probably, yeah. Um, I will have spent for blood to bring it from the forest. Okay. Or spent for, like, to buff my strength to bring it from the forest. Uh, what do I need for that? Like, one, two points? Something like that? I'll say two points and you can carry it in your arms easily. Cool, yeah. Um, but I will drag it, whether or not I can carry it, into the, uh, into town and into the inn. <laughs> Oh, sounds good. All right. The pig skin is still on it because it's it's just easier that way. Uh, and it is yes. leaving a greasy red streak behind it as you drag it into the tavern. Uh, what do we have here? A gift. From himself. Uh, you serious? He says to let us stay the night. Well. To rest. One. Night and day. Make me a charisma and intimidation roll at a difficulty of five. Cool. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, three successes. Three successes, he will swallow thickly and nod. There are some... The accommodations will be tight. In the stables. Right this way. And with that, he will lead you out to the stables where your horses can be fed, your men will grumble, particularly Ivan, quite the complainer. <laughs> and you will find yourselves able to rest the day in the stables. See, Mikael, nothing to worry about. And I think that is where we're going to take our break for the night. So, folks, we'll be back in just a minute. Don't go anywhere. Everybody, welcome back. This is the part of the program where we talk to the chat for a little bit. Uh, so, uh, like I said before, everybody, this is going to be our last episode for two weeks uh, while I am on vacation. And while, let's see, Robin, you're going to be out of town because you're going to be down in La Dominican Republic. Um, I, don't, I don't know if I'm going to be able to survive two weeks. You're not going to be able to survive? It's I know, okay, it's going to suck. It's going to suck. Dead. It's going to be hard. But Robin, you get to come and get, uh, get your Zamisi clan book that I bought you. When you come to visit. I do. And also I might, we might, I said, we have, well, I'll double confirm with the group, but I, I might still get into Teresa's makeup. Blood, mind. Costume. Thing. All right. Teresa takes over me 
now. It's it's That's weird. Good. This is one of the characters. I know. Yeah. But it's it's like, really it's... funny how some costumes do that. Like when you get into the costume and there's just that mm -hmm. energy. Like right at the beginning of the game tonight, I was still feeling like I didn't sleep well last night. I had a headache. My contacts were pissing me off. So, you know, I'm kind of mad that I had to wear glasses, et cetera, et cetera. But I put the fangs in and then the moment I got to talk and it was like, oh, yeah, here she is. Here's Eliona and yep. <laughs> and yep. go. Absolutely. Right. And it's it's wonderful to be able to have those type of characters. I love getting into those. Like, I love it when the character just totally possesses you and you do things. You're like, I don't know where that came from. Yeah. Yeah. There's stuff with Therese in like episode one where I was like, I don't know where that came from. That was not me deciding that. That was <laughs> not me. That uh, one time where uh, Caitlin and I um, uh, swapped costumes for Netherdeep, like just for that little photo shoot, and she was dressed up as Dorlin and I was in Zarya's outfit. She was just like, oh my gosh, there's something about wearing that like mad scientist gear that I was just like, I got this energy now, blah, blah, blah. blah. And I was just like, yep, yep. Oh, there's XP number four for the night because someone spent their, uh, their bookworm purchase on it. Right. All right, you guys are going to be too beefy. I'm going to have to, so like, buff. throw antediluvians at you. That's Long. my goal, anyway. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, I'm very excited. So, while I'm away for my little vacation, I'm going to do a rebroadcast, I think, for the week. I'm trying to think of what I want to rebroadcast, though, because we... I might do Netherdeep, actually. I was going to say, did you finish Rain? I did do all of Rain. I did all of Rain, and I did... What did I do? I did Rain, I did... Which light? Which light? And oh, you did, I did World Below? Nice. And I did the World Below. Yeah, yeah. So I'm probably going to do uh, Nether Deep and... Rhyme I could do Strixhaven. Me. I could do... Um, the only problem is it still uses like oh. the D&D logo. Yeah, you're right. But that was before they clamped down on their D&D logos. So right. um, I could I could do some other games. I could do Dirge for XLR, yeah. But then we all have to experience the disappointing last episode together again. Um, I could do Secret of Hexeter House and have an entirely disappointing season. Uh, so that could be fun. Oh, you just finished doing Party Monsters. Hey, it's Swole Initiative. Hey, Swole Initiative. Welcome. We're just having a quick chat break before we hop back into game. Good to see you here. Get Swole. Uh, Swole, we're going to party and run a bunch of events at, at Gen Con this year, right? Let me know. You know, it's, it's funny because uh, uh, Party Monsters, Caitlin and I were actually talking about that today. She was just like, oh, I really want I really want our characters to come back as villains in another game, like <laughs> in a different game, like that's related to Party Monsters. And I just looked at her and be like, those of us who survived. God, I all of the worlds are Shots. connected. I I had somebody ask which order to watch our Chronicles of Darkness games into. And I'm like, basically release order. It's basically release order because I have things show up throughout. Um, although it gets a little murky between Hunter and Demon. Those, like Hunter summons and Demon. Those get get a little... Oh, you guys, we're playing Call of Cthulhu. That's fantastic. Mm. Wait, Nerdy Metal Gent, you were in a music video? That's rad. Um, Mushroom Zombie Man for Chris. Um, what else is going on? God, guys, guys, we got so many games going on. Uh, but before I go on vacation next week, we still have, uh, so join us on Saturday for Mage the Ascension, the Victorian Age. Uh, if you are on the Patreon, you are going to get access to a special early Valentine's Day present this weekend. So you definitely want to join just for that. It's the stupidest thing we've ever recorded. You're going to love it. Um, then on Sunday, we've got Planescape coming back at noon on Sunday. Uh, and then that evening we're doing an off stream recording of, um, uh, an off stream recording of Old Gods of Appalachia. We're finally getting episode Which three in the can. Which just asked for in the chat. <laughs> was it? I did. Old Gods um, of yeah, Appalachia. somebody was like, can yeah. we have more Old Gods? <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, the problem yeah. is, um, one of the players only is available. They, they work nights. So they are only available like one day a week, maybe. And it, it basically two of the players. So Jen, you're in that game and your schedule and this player's schedule often are like conflicting because you have to give yep. up something important to you to, to make it on Thursdays. So it's kind yeah. of a, which, which I'll do once in a while, but yeah, but I don't want to make you do that we were all the time. Originally, yeah, exactly. And the time we were originally trying to figure out this next one, which then we, we moved the recording date, but, um, 
I was like, I, I just had to miss a bunch for some other things, so I really don't yeah. want to miss another one. Um, and then, Robin, the uh, Valentine's Day thing is the thing that we're recording on Friday. Okay. I thought you said, like, because you said you recorded it, right? I'm like, wait, is something different? Wait, no, did I get recast? They don't, they, don't know when, they don't know when we record things. Okay. Shh. It's fine. Um, but yeah, so uh, Old Gods is coming. I've been listening to, I've been walking the dog every day this week, listening to Old Gods of Appalachia. So I'm like three episodes into season three? Are we in season three or four right now? Season four. Season four. In I season... started The Adventure Zone Dracula. <laughs> Man, it, it is like the Adventure Zone Dracula is like it starts so strong with that opening from Dracula, and then you get into the game and it kind of it kind of levels down. Okay, I I I'm on episode two. Yeah, and I think I think it's in episode one where I got so mad because Bye. I forget which of the 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 brothers did it, but they did the whole I snuck this by on my character sheet. You looked oh, at it yeah. but didn't read it. I was so pissed that reading was, that. I'm like that that's a Travis. bullshit move. Yeah, that, that was Travis. Travis. Uh, I was just just like, playing I'm like, Lady Come Claywin. on. Right, yes. I I got to admit, I don't 100% love Lady Claywin. I think it's her name. Lady Lady what's her name? As a character, but as a concept of being this like bitchy, straight-backed, like, s wealthy spinster who got, like, killed by Dracula but had insurance with Frankenstein, so her head got sewed onto the body of a luscious barbarian girl. Yeah, it's so wonderful. And so she's, like, a 75-year-old woman on the head of, like, basically, like, um... Conan? The curviest barbarian chick ever. And she's like, oh, my calves! Yeah, it's great. I clearly need to watch this. Just listen, listen to it. It's um the opening to it the is the best. Like it's oh, just the Dracula opening basically. Is fantastic. I actually was like, is this Murph? Is this Murph from Nadpod doing this? Because it sounds like his straw. Like perfect. Um, but I was so I was so inspired by that. I was like, yeah, I really I want to run something stupid like this. Guys, 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 I finally got my pre-release copy of Eat the Reich. <gasps> yeah, yeah, you showed me that. You showed me the okay. art from that. It's so it's, good. It's a game set in World War II where you're a, a you are a an assault squad of vampires who have to eat the Third Reich. That sounds also, amazing. There's what was it? Tactical Tell me more. Tactical coffins? drop coffins. Tactical yeah, drop coffins. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. Right. I'm, I'm in. Extra life, please, please. I, it's too violent for extra life. I think. Um, Ooh, but I will fair. run it for I mean, something. I'll run it. Mm. Mm. I'll run it for Dork something. X. I'll run it for something. Dork X. We have the non Dread Pirate non Robert in our chat right now. Crazy. What's that? We have a Dread Pirate Robert. We have the Dread Pirate Ooh, Robert in our nice. chat. Nice. I'm gonna I add love that your head beneath the rag. Guys, the art is so good. It's so good, and like it's it, all the characters are pre-gen, and one of them is just like a bat person. Yeah, I saw that character. I was like, I want. I don't want to be that. Um, it's so it's so good. I'm very excited for it. Um, I also have I'll, I'll I can't talk about that during that stream, but that other book that I that I had ordered, oh, as you wish, you handsome devil. Um, so, um, but uh, yeah, eat the Reich sounds awesome. Um, and oh yeah, Patreon release. Thank you, Jen. That's really clever. Because then I because I, I want to get more people signing up for the Patreon because that's how I afford food, um, and I like food. I, I'm eating less of it these days, uh, which is good. But I still like being able to afford it because food's expensive. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, and then we're doing more Alien soon. Um, the next one's in March. We still have one more episode that needs to be released that's been filmed, and um, I would like to not be streaming five to six days a week. Eventually, I would like to be down to like four. I think that's I think that's a good number because then I can write more. And uh, I will be getting that module out to Patreon soon. For those of you who have been like, Kelly promised a module. I'm like, yeah, I got really busy. And then I, well, after I got really sick for like two weeks, so I'm a little behind. Uh, there will be a post on Patreon about that soon. Um, yeah, so chill yourself. Like, take care of yourself. You deserve food too. Never give me food if it costs you your food. That is, I don't want that. I don't want that. I want you to take care of yourself. Plus, I still have to work through, like, the ideas you were throwing at me for, for like, the Underdark. So, like, uh, and by the way, please, like, continue, like, getting me a digest of that. Because you send me a lot of YouTube videos and I, it's, it's hard to find stuff. 
I want to know. I want to know what the ideas were like condensed. Um, so besides that, does anybody have anything cool that they want to talk about before we head back in? This is fun. I'm I'm kind of sad. This is fun. That we're going to be gone for two weeks. You're going into the Dominican. I know, but I'm sad I don't get to play Vampire. You're allowed to miss fun things when you go do other fun things. Yeah, yeah. you're allowed to miss the fun thing. You'll be enjoying all that sun and thinking of how much Teresa can't the entire time. I know. You know what? Teresa will be sucking on on people. Whoa. (laughs) And I will be sucking on drinks. You already are sucking on a drink. Uh, Robin, you just finished uh, bottling your wine today. I did. It's so pretty. It's so yummy. And I you're, made it. You're, you're not drinking it right now. You're drinking something that looks just like wine, but is not for Twitch purposes. Oh, really? Okay, yes. No, I'm definitely drinking juice. It's definitely... I mean, technically. It is juice. Yep. It is yeah, a form juice. of juice. You you juiced it. I juiced it. I straight the juiced juice it. is on the loose. But yeah, on another note, <laughs> I bottled the wine that I uh, made from start to start to finish all by myself with my decisions. Is the is the like the, the, the you're so person, cool. So you know, you're cool. too cool, too cool for school. Me. Aww. Bah. Who's the juice? Who's on the loose? <laughs> A starry OJ Simpson. Fraser. Moose. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> all right. We're old um, enough to know. <laughs> They'll probably let you drink wine on stream. I just don't want to deal with it if, if that's a thing. I, I know that like alcohol consumption on Twitch, I've got a tag, um, and, and as well as anytime we mention firearms, so there's there's one. I always put the so like when you upload a, a YouTube video with monetization, you have to like list everything that you do, and I just always tag firearms in case I do finger guns and someone calls me on it, because it's that like I like having my super high reliability index for my own self rating. Um, also, I put out a bunch Fair. of YouTube shorts, so I'm excited. You should watch my YouTube shorts because the one with oh. yeeting Amy is really cute. It's really good. Uh, speaking of shorts, of Mondays. Come, I, hey, since we're not streaming Dork Tales on Friday, come join me. Since all you are watching Vampire the Masquerade, come watch me on my own channel, Second Gen Gamer, as I go into to episode two of my playthrough of Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines, it's... which apparently the song is copyrighted in the... Uh, Dude, the soundtrack it, is so good. The soundtrack is bumping, but isolated at the at the, at the the asylum is copyright, so my VOD is has muted parts. So live, come watch it live, where you can hear the banging ass soundtrack. It's, it's so neat watching that as somebody who like has so many memories of playing that game when it first came I, out and being like i remember that reaction i remember that reaction like it's it's so good it's beautiful what, to watch was, you know I was, what i, I was missed? scared i was if very scared you, of the so robin hotels. yep if you i know you use like spotify and like the internet and stuff like that instead of like like sourced music but if you go into your files for that game they have all the mm-hmm. mp3s right there for those songs, like what? they're actually just M- those, they're, they're just playing MP3s on loop. They're inside of the system files for that. That's how all of us got them on burned oh. CDs back in the day. Oh, wow! That's right. We back in CDs. our day when we were just <laughs> using those burned CDs. No, that's my dog. Gonna kick him My favorite thing about playing The Sims was putting my own music in the radio. God. Oh yeah, that was pretty dope. Uh, right. Okay, so one thing real quick. This is a Dragonlance reference. So apparently in the Dragonlance animated movie, the awful one, the discs of Mishikal look like a spool of blank CDs. <laughs> and I'm just wondering what Mishikal's hardcore mix is. <laughs> Mishikal's healing mix. I have I'm a feeling even, it sounds like Enya. It's like breakup I was, songs. And oh my god! I was, I was just gonna you know say what? Enya, Chris. It's the, Stop, it's the pure it moods commercial. 
experience yeah. the sound of pure bliss. Every Return time I get pure moods as a <laughs> humanities card, card against humanity card, I save it for Kelly because I know it will get him. I know like, it wins mm. because I used to watch a lot of late night TV because I was raised by television guys. People people keep commenting because yeah. they're trying to guess how old I am, right? And they're like, oh, well, you're definitely a Gen Xer because you get that reference. No, I was raised by TV. I was a military brat who like, my German wasn't great when I was living in Europe, so I watched tons of stuff just constantly on repeat. Like I, 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 I am, I'm a latchkey millennial. It just, it's all here, man. It's all here. It's all here. I'm so amazed all... every time I Dude, watch I The used Simpsons to be... with you, and you can oh just, my... you can quote. Because Robin Simpsons. never watched The Simpsons. I sat her down and forced her to watch it. Yep. Because my and parents didn't allow like... me to watch The Simpsons growing up. Yeah, yeah, but you understand culture twice as well now, don't you? I uh, yeah. yeah. It's amazing. Oh, if you ever have the pleasure. Oh, uh, well, you know, huh, normally the blood gets off on the third floor. Um, <laughs> if you, the Smurfs in German is dope. Um, but if you have the chance to go watch the first 12 seasons of The Simpsons with someone who has never seen them, you will have a new appreciation for the incredible impact that the show has had on both our culture and our dialect. Yep. Boo earns. Boo earns. Nobody you know, makes me bleed my salad. own blood. <laughs> Grease me up, woman. Okie dokie. <laughs> right? It's so it's so pervasive. But curse you, sexy Flanders. <laughs> curse you, sexy Flanders. Stupid sexy Flanders. It's almost like I'm wearing nothing at all. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. <laughs> nothing at all. <laughs> Lisa needs nothing braces. Dental plan. No, oh my God, right? <laughs> so how about that it's vampire? so good. Oh, uh, yeah. Monorail. Dental plan. <laughs> I hear those things are awfully loud. Glides as quiet <laughs> as a cloud. Written by Conan O'Brien, right? It's like so good. Mm. Anyway, uh, folks, we're going to be hopping back into the game. Thank you so much for this Simpsons break. Um, God, I would love to... Treehouse of Horror. The Treehouse of Horror episodes are so good. Yeah. And of course, I forced Robin to watch the Treehouse of Horror Dracula episode before she watched the movie. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Blah. Blah. Don't worry, we'll do more shadow stuff when you're not like in the woods. All right. That's fair. So, That's fine. I I know. I know you get there. I, come on. I know you. I know you. You're the we'll amazing there. storyteller. I don't know you. Oh, thank you so much. You you wound me with love. Um, all right, speaking of wounding, I think it's about time for us to head back into game. That wasn't a segue for any reason. All right, <laughs> everybody take a stretch. Crack your backs. Um, <coughs> I will mention I, I will mention as we go into this, um, since we, we ended on a good line, and I never want to jeopardize ending on a good line. <laughs> right. But um, Eliona will, uh, you know, make sure that the innkeeper has the boar and um and also is leaving him like many of those herbs that she had dried because she doesn't expect to come back anytime soon so she's just like okay. you will use these <laughs> all right sounds awesome all right so with that note let's head back into the transylvania chronicles here on dork tales <clears throat> welcome back to the transylvania chronicles you spend the night inside of the stables, resting, and the next day as well. Your men travel around, buying any provisions necessary, you know, dried meat, some bread, things like that, at slightly inflated prices. And as the next night settles across the land, you awaken. Everybody spend a point of blood, please. Now, with that in mind, Eliona, are you sharing anything from your uh, from your encounter? Yes, um, I will. Um, once we kind of have a moment, uh, a moment alone, once we're like in the staples or or whatever, I'll pull the others together and say that um, I was able to procure us this rest time, but unfortunately, my hmm, the one who has claimed me 
has opinions about our being here and is likely to try and stop us as we travel further. Especially now that you've been titled City Dweller. <laughs> Eliana's going to look very questioningly at Bastion. What? So, all this resistance. You resist were there. You were quiet. Oh, Bastion can be quite quiet when he needs to be. Ever so watchful. Ever so quiet. <laughs> I must good skill. be on the lookout for my companions. If you were to go missing in the woods and nobody was there to watch it would it have even happened <laughs> uh, just a quick question um mm -hmm. kelly so for the ears of the bat it doesn't have a yes. time length so is, i'm assuming with five successes it's like mage where you have an effect up uh so it should say inside of the combo discipline how long it lasts I have the full paragraph and it doesn't say. So then it lasts until you sleep usually. Okay, cool, thank you. So it basically is a flesh craft option. Like you pop them up and they last until they don't. Um, okay. I'm going to assume that unless otherwise stated. Perfect, I can do some research, but I just- I believe, I believe that's the case. Okay, cool. Sorry. Just was curious about mm -hmm. that if I totally saw that. Totally fine. Up with no, my it's good to know. successes. What <laughs> big ears you have. A head. So They're all of this now. was... Oh. Um, not some mortal lord, but... No. He doesn't like us specifically, or he does not like... City he does dollars? not want interlopers in his territory. What? Can we go around? Hmm. Yes, what is his territory? Anywhere he chooses. Actually, Kelly, mm -hmm. can I do a politics roll to figure out who this individual is that, uh, might Absolutely. Control this area. Sure. Give me it at eight. At eight. Mm -hmm. Hint in politics. Ooh, in could politics. I potentially try as well? Uh, Absolutely. Two. two. Okay. Hint in politics. And what I know about them. I got one success. Two one sevens success. haunting me, though. <laughs> All right. So around here, what you're going to gather, uh, what you're going to know about this area is that there is. Well, there's a canine that prowls the forests around Klausenberg, a story of a great hunter who protects Klausenberg from nocturnal threats, is what you'll know, Teresa. Renald, you will know that that canine is known as Mitru, the hunter. He is, um, well, there are little legends about his accomplishments. He's rarely seen, but the villagers believe that he is a, a dark protector that stalks the night to protect the Vlachs. The legend is becoming more elaborate. He's almost becoming like a guardian angel mixed with a little bit of Robin Hood. The mortals seem to love him. I'm going to look over at Eliana and just like, from what I can recall of them, Mitu seems like a uh, an upstanding individual. I think he, if the legends are, if there's any truth to the legends about him or the rumors that go around, uh, he seems to have his heart in the right place. But of course, he those tend to be exaggerated. Moments. 
He what can we problems. expect? Hmm. He... He is going to try to end our journey here. In town? No. He won't bring it into the town. But as we continue on, we are likely to meet with him. And, and it will not be pleasant. And how... If we were to... What side will you a take? confrontation with uh, me, true. Exactly. Thank you. I have my obligations. He and I both hope I come out alive. And what if, if uh, what if it comes to down to him coming out alive? then he won't. Oh, certainly there's a path that lies ahead of all of us where everyone can come out alive. Possibly, but predators are predators. It is it is the Law of the wild. The strongest eat. He knows that and so do I. What a peculiar... <laughs> peculiar fate your clan has. We are just honest with what we are. But I did not wish us to go in blind. Your honesty is appreciated. Knowing that, we can be more on the watch and be more careful. Agreed. <sighs> well, at least we know it's coming. Your ghouls assemble. Your guards assemble. And together, you leave behind Fassenberg. Begin to make your way further into Transylvania and toward your ultimate goal. The city vanishes behind you and you make your way into the woods. Having been able to sleep a bit more, your men appear to be in good spirits as you are making your way deeper through the Transylvanian forests. The horses breathe harsh breath out of their nostrils. Plumes of steam arise as they push forward. Kelly? Yes? Since we're going to be possibly in a confrontation with uh, another vampire, I'm going mm -hmm. to try and see if uh, there's any time to uh, get um, Carl or Felix to try and gather some stakes. Sure. They absolutely could have done, absolutely could do that before you leave. Okay. Uh, and, and pass them I'm, around. I'm gonna go double check, but how often do ghouls once a uh, month? Yeah, no, how much do, do ghouls regenerate blood? They do not regenerate, you have to feed them one point of blood. Yeah, or do you mean, uh, are you talking about for healing? No, for like, I drank three th blood things out oh, of their ten. Yeah. How, oh, consider, how often does consider them... that the, each point of blood is about a level of lethal damage? And so they have to heal like a it day. Lethal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay, so cool. they heal a lethal a day of rest. Cool. Cool. Thank um, you. And if we were wondering. if we were down willpower because we yes, slept, you, we, we would have we... slept and regenerated it. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, I think Therese in the morning will try and find some... Uh, well, I guess no, we're probably not welcome. I think probably like a little outside of the town, Therese will probably try and feed on an animal just because apparently humans are Sure, you can difficult. make me a calling roll or a beckoning okay. roll. Yes, because yes, I can do that. Uh, mm -hmm. okay. And what are you pulling in to drink off of? Um, something a little. Hmm. Uh, what would be common animal around here? Like, I guess. Mm, like rabbits or something? Yeah, sure. Rabbits oh, no, are a little no, no, harder, so definitely look up um, what prey animals are for that. Uh, oh, predator. Oh, prey. Rats and owls are six. Cats, bats. Uh, sure. Let's let's get some cats. Sure. Some some just wild cats and barn cats and things like that. Yeah. Sounds good. Go ahead. Uh, do, 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 do. To the wild. Uh, okay. That's commanding an animal. Calling, sorry, is. Uh... And while you're doing that. Oh, charisma and. Oh, no. Gifts calling the animal is the charisma and survival. Mm -hmm. Right. Right, right, right. I think a cat gives. Two points of blood. I think it's cat? in our quick, quick reference things. If somebody is, is in that folder, Perfect. I'm, I'm looking for <clears> it. <throat> but I was in the wrong folder. <laughs> uh, I got a, I got um, one success, so a single animal responds. Okay. Uh, well, you are going to gain. I'll say it's particularly fat cat. I'll spend a nice. something good happens, and you can generate. You can drain it completely down and gained yeah. three points of blood. Ooh. Wonderful. It is a giant cat. Like, it's like a Maine Coon somehow. Nice. Wow. All right. All right. And that's because I wanted to spend yeah. that something good happens in advance. All right. Uh-oh. I'm sorry, guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, so, normal cat uh, has a blood pool of one. So it is, is a, a very, very large cat. cat. Very big kitty. <laughs> So we'll say yeah. that it's like you summoned a, um, I don't know if Transylvania has like cougars or mountain lions, but probably has something like that. Or like the, something. what's the, the bo not box, bobcats? I don't know. Yeah, Maybe a large bobcats. predatory cat lynx. native to the lynx. Carpathians European. is summoned. Oh, lynx, yeah. Sure. A European lynx. Yeah. Sure, you get, a, you get a, a three point one of those. Nice, thank you. All right. <clears throat> With that, you make your way further into the woods. Your wagons are able to travel freely as you follow the road toward Bistris. The vast woodland area surrounds you, and the only light that is visible are the few torches held by the ghouls, the lanterns as well. The carriages rock back and forth as your wagons propel themselves deeper into the woods. And I would like all of you to make me a perception and alertness roll. Difficulty seven. Um, El Eliona would also like to uh, be scouting ahead, but not nearly as far as she was before. Mm -hmm. So she's trying to stay somewhat close. But I can uh, I'm gonna I can use my specialty in wilderness in alertness. Sounds yes. good. <laughs> uh, yes, for the alertness, you absolutely can. Uh, the roll was Perception plus Alertness, Difficulty 7. Two. And that is cool. And this is opposed by me. Can I spend willpower, good sir? Yes, you may. That's Four. three dice, correct. Four. Mm -hmm. uh, that, no, it is a automatic success in this system. Oh, right. Okay, and this is Difficulty 7 versus Difficulty 6 for me. So that is all right. I have a number. Of the difficulty successes. was seven. 
Oh, wait. Does... This was a perception? Yes. Yeah. Four successes? Okay. Four successes. As you are making your way through the woods... Eliona, you head out front, keeping an eye on things. You are probably, what, 50 meters ahead of everyone else? Yeah, that seems about right. Okay. I'm just gonna, I have a little... C could I also potentially roll for a pull knock as well, since I have him as a ghoul stats? Sure. If he is flying, if he's flying around, sure. Yeah, to, especially with the warning, I, I didn't want to say what you're doing in the description, but yeah, no. Please. Teresa has Polnock out flying. Sure, that sounds good. Wow, Polnock got a, a 10. Um, Polnock got two, so you know. Okay, uh, his 10s explode. will explode because he is oh, a bird. Sweet, okay, uh, let me roll that again. With perception? Yeah, absolutely. He has a specialty okay. in being a bird. Nice. Uh, good, so three. Specialty. So three it's for Polnock. Three? Okay. So Paul no Paul Naroff is going to be slightly caught off guard, as Paul Naroff tends to be. I'm going to call oh him Paul Naroff for the rest of life. Did, you, did yeah. you name the bird Paul Naroff? I, I, no, I named Polnock, which is Midnight in Hungarian. Oh, Polnarev. okay. It's a Raven. But Kelly's calling him Paul Naroff now, which is kind of, I kind of have to... Nah, fuck. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so... As you are earrings. making your way through the woods, Aliona, you are going to squat down and feel the trail in front of the carts. And you're going to notice that there are several footprints here. Fairly fresh in the mud. Several men. And you will hear a rustle in the brush just in time. I would like an initiative roll off of everyone here. Uh, Chris, you are going to be surprised the first round of combat. Okay, good. so, perfect. Okay. Uh, can I have, so is uh, Polnock Polnar, also going to be surprised? He is going to be surprised. Okay. Only the vampires are going to not be surprised. Uh, if they so succeed at the roll. Yeah. It was okay. a single D10 plus the lower of... Nope, It's uh, so in this system it's a single plus D10 both. plus your wits and dexed. Oh, I see. The static number is wits and dex. Yeah. Yep. All right. So, let's see. Oh, and it only re-rolls re -rolls if you have a specialty that is a, a, that um, helps with that. I have the same modifier as, as Polnick. Pol okay. Okay. Um, okay. So. As you're making your way through the woods, there is suddenly a burst of motion out of the undergrowth. Bastion, what do you do? Eight men armed with longbows spring up on either side of the trail. Aliona, looking ahead, you can, you see that there are tracks and right as you're scouting further, you notice that a large tree trunk has been knocked just around the corner in the trail signaling an ambush site. Bastion, it's your turn. What do you do? All right. I'm going to try and uh, break line of sight so that I might use obvious gate and pop okay. uh, I'm gen eight, three per turn. Mm -hmm. uh, put some blood into strength. And it's one for one, right? It's one for one. Okay. And um, even if it's just in the... Uh... Are they on both sides of the... the they path? are on both sides and you... Yep. They are on both sides of the vehicle. So I guess I could just break line of sight in I the mean, wagon. You're inside, of the, you're inside of the cart. Yeah. Yeah. It's covered, right? It's covered. Basically like a Romani wagon. One of those style. 
Would I be, gotcha, would I be able to uh, then move as well? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right. Um, I'm immediately going to move out and oh, see if I can look for some um, leadership or who, who they're following or even if I have to sneak sneak past them. Okay, so moving your way, you can head basically to the left or right side of the trail. I'm going to go left. Okay, so moving down there, you're going to hop out and move down toward a cluster of people. I want you to make me a perception alertness roll at a difficulty of nine. If you're using Auspex to look and listen, I'll lower that to a difficulty of seven. I will. Okay. To look and listen. Um, perception and... Alertness. And I'll spend a willpower on this. Please do. And the difficulty was lowered to... Seven. Seven. <laughs> Everything's nines or six. One. Nice. Oh, and the willpower buys one? Willpower will buy one if you spend it before you roll, yes. That's four. Okay, four successes. Uh, you are going to see that there are a pair of canines hidden on either side of the trail up in the trees. The one at the far left, about, I'd say about 60 feet away from you up in a tree, barely visible through the foliage with several arrows knocked and a large jar of something sitting in the branches next to him is the man that met with Eliona the previous night. The one on the left side where I am? The one on the left side, yes. About 60 feet from you. All right. I think that's okay. my turn then. That's going to be your turn. All right. Mitru is going to lower his hand and is going to rain a volley of arrows down. Uh, he is going to take two shots. One, two. I believe he can do three shots with celerity, actually. Um, so that is going to be boom. And that's going to be a boom. Holy crap. This guy's great. And... Okay, uh, three shots are going to ring out and you are going to see an arrow plunge right through the side of Petar's head, plunging out the other side of his temple as he collapses to the ground dead at the front. Nearby, another arrow lodges in Bowler's chest, one of the retainers that brought you here. In fact, Bowler being the one who brought, let's see, who was it? Bowler brought you. Renault. And the last one is going to hit, and now we're going to roll to see who randomly it hits. By the way, your ghouls are on this chart. Okay, rolling 2d10, counting the list. Number 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Nicolay. The one who brought who brought you there, Teresa, takes an arrow directly in the upper thigh, stands up with a look of shock at the arrow that's plunging out of his crotch. Just slightly lower, he grabs at it, plucks it out, and it comes away with rivers of blood. You're taking it and out, the problem. Alyona, it's your turn. What do you do? Excellent. Um, can I see that arrows are coming from the trees? They are, yes. I would like to climb a tree and I don't actually know who's up there, but arrows from trees are never good. <laughs> this is absolutely are the, true. Are all of the shots coming from trees? So, there are eight archers that are standing in the tree line on the ground. Three arrows just erupted from the branches of a tree above. Uh, Elyona, to see where he is, I'm going to need you to make me a perception and alertness roll. Can do. He is very well hidden. Uh, difficulty? Uh, difficulty of... Do you have Eyes of the Beast on? Um, 
I never said I did, so I won't, but I Would will. you have been tracking in the woods without it? That's true. It is very dark. And you were so. scouting ahead. I'm going to give you the benefit yeah. of the doubt on this one. Okay. Uh, so give it to me a difficulty of eight. Okay, okay, okay. Um, that's still two successes. All right. You're going to see that there are two canites of about the same size as Mitru. One is at the upper left hand of the path, basically at the head of the carriages. There's another flanked opposite side of the road who you think that you think that it's Mitru on your right, the left hand side of the path. Okay. Mm -hmm. You think the other one is another canine named named Wolfar. Who runs with Mitru's pack. Okay. Dangerous, um, not as dangerous. Fair. And the arrows came from the one that's on my right that I think is Mitru? Yes. Cool. I'm going up that one because that's the one who's who's fired at this point. <laughs> okay. So it's going to take your turn to basically make it to the base of that tree. Yeah, that's fine. Um, okay. Actually, Sound I'm going to, well, while we're doing that, I will spend blood. <laughs> that sounds great. I'm going to spend three into my physicals, which I'll figure out exactly what that is in a minute. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Teresa, it is your turn. What are you doing? Uh, I think Teresa is going to uh, get out of the carriage um, and she's going to lean her head out the door and just let out this howl as I would like to call yeah. some wolves to come aid me. Okay, that sounds great. Let's let's see how it goes for you. Alright, uh, I'm going to spend a willpower. That sounds like a great idea. Right? Uh, oh shit, fam. That's four successes. Oh, whoa. What does that give you? Like, all the wolves? Uh, most, mo of, most of the animals respond. And then I would simultaneously like to do the uh, whispers to the wild. Now that they come to me, then I can ask. So them you can only to... do you only doing one a turn. It does take them a little while to show up, so they won't show up till next round. Okay. Uh, right. They will not. They will not attack. Not bay with the application of whispers of the wild. Okay. Uh, and so if you will the ask them at the beginning of your next turn. Yeah, and whisper. Whispers may of the wild may benefit from decreased difficulty at storyteller discretion. <laughs> it, they may, they may. Okay, uh, is your bird doing anything? Um, I'm also going to spend three points of blood because I can do that okay. as a, as like a free action, right? Basically. Mhm. Mm okay, cool. Uh, I'm going to spend three points of blood to boost my physical stats. Um, All right, sounds good. Uh, what is uh, Polnareff doing? Uh, Polnareff is. <laughs> I guess he's that now. Uh, that's great. Uh, <laughs> Pull knock is going to make a uh, a claw attack at one of the um, like archers nearby in the trees. All right. So uh, one of the ones that is like like basically like in the tree line. So go ahead. And yeah, in the tree line, around. like make a like a dive and then claw at it. Okay. okay. Um. What would that be? Uh, dexterity? Uh, that would be and... Dex and Brawl. Dex and Brawl. Okay. What is my difficulty? Difficulty of six. Okay. Oh, shit. Why Why is Why is Pull not getting all my tens? Um, <laughs> that's amazing. Uh, that is four successes for Pull. Okay, roll me damage plus three. So it's strength plus three. Yep. Um, and add a add a point of And it says two cloth. Yeah, and cloth it says claw two two for two dice lethal. Yeah. So that means that you are rolling um so roll me uh roll so me strength three dice is of two. lethal. Yeah. Oh pardon okay. me. So you got you got four successes? Yeah. Okay, roll me so six strength dice. Plus six dice, okay. Yeah. Thank you for doing the math for me. Oh, but then you, I know, then he whiffed. That's only one success. Okay. He whiffed well, on those either dice. Way, there is going to be a yelp as one of the archers has his face clawed by this bird. Ah. All right. At that point, there is a loose of arrows that explodes out. 
half of your guards hit the ground. Half of your remaining guards hit the ground. Um, and I'm going to ask you all to do me a favor. Of the six guards, one is already dead, uh, and you have five more. Um, I would like you all to do me a favor. Uh, Chris, you didn't get to act this round. Can you roll me three dice and tell me if any of them are ones? Uh, no, eight, seven, and five. Perfect. Okay, Antonio hits the ground. Ivan hits the ground, and Bogan hits the ground as arrows pepper them from, from both sides. Uh, let's see. And other characters who are outside of the wagons, um, which means that there are four more attacks. Alyona! Hey, one of them's going to come at you right now, my friend. That is going to be six dice to hit you. Uh, they are going to be at a difficulty of eight because of darkness because you are away from things uh that is going to be one success that is going to be one success okay and the damage there it's going to be so let me just double check that real quick and then i get to roll um to soak right you will get a chance to roll soak absolutely um, okay. And they are not, like, aiming for hearts or anything, so you will definitely cool, cool. be uh, be all right. There we go. Bows. Okay, so they've got not technically long My bows, but basically. My disgusting, though. <laughs> I bet. There we go. Long bow. So that is only five dice of damage. All right. Give me a soak roll, please. All right. That's five for soak. Okay. The arrow passes through your clothes and shatters against the side of your body as you are in motion. A beautiful hit. Another one of them is going to take aim and fire at Teresa as she howls outside of the cart. Uh, Teresa, I absolutely hit you. So that is going to be five successes to hit you, mm. which means that that is eight dice of damage. Yeah, there's no, like, reflexive dodge rolls in this, eh? Nope, not unless you split your pool to dodge. Okay. And you you spent it on activating a discipline. So, what we can do is you can roll me your stamina. Okay. And does anybody remember at the top of their head, um, bullets are halved, are arrows? I, I think not because they're, like, swords. Because they're pointed, mm. but, like, they're, they're more... Bull. Yeah. Lady? Okay. Lady as opposed to blunt. Things that you forget because you haven't ran Dark Ages in 10 years. Yeah. I can Two double check. successes. Okay. An arrow is going to catch you right in the upper chest, lodging in you. Um, until we hear back from Jen, that is going to be three levels of lethal damage. Okay. Um, so I have... So you're going to go XXX, and I need you to make yeah. me the first frenzy roll of the game. Make Ooh. me a self-control roll, please. Uh, also, I do have pain tolerance, so I just, I uh, from on my turn, I ignore sure. wound pellet You'll penalties. You'll ignore the wound penalties. However, you Yee. are going to make a frenzy roll from the indignity of being shot by one of these fucking barbarians. Cool. Uh, that's a plus. Then that's plus two to my difficulty. All right. Aww. You're going to be rolling at a difficulty of nine. So it's just, what What do I roll for frenzy? I've never done You roll self-control. Oh! Difficulty of nine. Oh. <laughs> uh -oh. You can spend a willpower already, on this roll. But I thought I already spent on my turn. Oh, then never mind. You can't. Yeah. Nope. I did it to call my animal. I'm mama moles. <laughs> Two, three, four. Beautiful. Um, this arrow catches you high in the chest and you look down and red fills your vision. You're going to enter an animalistic frenzy. You're going to do your best to cause grievous bodily harm using the gifts that Cain gave you. You do not take any wound penalties. Um, under When I run, I will allow you to blood buff as you are, so long as you are in anger frenzy, which you are. Okay. Um, you're going to want to berserker rage is what's going to happen. Awesome. Awesome. This is going to be great. Okay, uh, that is 
your turn, or that is what happens to you. There are two more shots. Another one's going to fire off at Eliona as she is headed toward Mitru. Um, Eliona, that is going to be a two, three successes to hit you. Uh, so give me another soak roll, please. I th Ooh, this one actually might hurt you. Uh, I have six. I only have five. Okay, you will take a single point of lethal damage and make me a frenzy roll. Difficulty of seven. Cool. Um, I will say because I pulled it up uh, in the in the core book, the um, it is saying that uh, damage from longbows, etc., are lethal. Okay. Thank so, you very much for looking it that up for me. Specifically, say that they're halved or anything, and it says armor piercing, which. <laughs> Fair. Um, actually, roll me at difficulty six because you are expecting a fight, specifically, mm, and fair. this is something I think you would be primed up for. Yes, yes. Uh, that's two successes. Okay. So you are going to take a point of lethal damage, but otherwise be fine. Um, and as... Okay, that's on the second turn of combat. That, that occurs. Um, okay, and then... Finally, one of them is going to uh, take a shot at a random member of the retainers. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Uh, Chris, can you do me a favor and roll me... Actually, there's no stamina for this. It's just his... What is the armor rating that Carl would have? Two? Uh, I think so. Um, okay, roll me one dice then. Okay. Ten? So we're... You rolled a ten? I rolled a ten. Oh, beautiful. Okay, that's going to be three successes to shoot Carl. Two successes with that one. Okay, so that means I only have five dice for injuring him. Could uh, Carl oh, dodge? Uh, no, he did not see this coming. He was surprised. Okay. Uh, Carl is going to take four levels of lethal damage. Oh, Carl... Uh, he is still alive, but he is incapacitated. Okay, uh, that is going to be uh, the... Un the Oh, sorry, there's one more person who has not acted. Uh, that is... Wolfar. Wolfar is going to hold his action. Uh, top of the initiative, Bastion, what are you doing? Going to... Channel... Three more blood points. Um, what can our physical attributes go up to? Uh, they can go all the way up, up to, to ten. Okay. Oh. But they oh, go so down six, by one six, every three rounds. Yeah. Six, six you is can where they hold. Maintain, but above that it goes down per round. Okay, got you. Um, and. Uh, does having a low blood pool affect anything like other versions? Like having Hunger a blood frenzy. pool of like four frenzy. versus like... Hunger Frenzy. That's Hunger Frenzy, that's okay. it. The when, big one. Do, do I need to note when that kicks in? Uh, basically, or... when you're below a quarter, let me know. I, I have four out of 16, or 15, so... Yes. Are you, how are you? How are you down to four when you you fed on the road? Oh, I didn't add that. Yeah, you were, you were at ten, and I yeah, don't think you should spent. Oh, a ton I of didn't shots. add. You should be at ten. <laughs> I didn't add, um, the blood from that, that scene. So you should you should <laughs> be uh, with waking up today. You should be at nine. There. Okay, that makes a little bit more sense. All right, uh, almost down to a quarter because I spent three blood last turn too. Oh, fair, fair. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Uh, um, well, you can always and, take it back from these guys. And in fact, uh, I am going to uh, rapidly scale uh, the tree trying to uh, to climb the opposite side of wherever um, 
the person with the crossbow is. The canine. Oh, it's a longbow, but yeah. Is. Okay. Oh, he is a longbow. It's a, he's using a long. They're all using longbows. I'm gonna try to get as close to him as possible this round. Okay. Then uh, make me a dexterity and athletics roll to climb the tree. Ooh. I'm going to spend willpower. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, dexterity. Can I use um, nimble? Yes, you may. All right. One, two, uh, three with the willpower success. Perfect. All right. You are going to climb up the tree, um, arriving on the branches near him on the other side of the tree. All right. And I think okay. that is me. That is you. All right. It is Mitru's turn. Uh, Mitru is going to reach down with his arrows and dip them into a clay pot. And with that, he lifts them up and they ignite. And uh, he is going to fire arrows smeared with pitch into the wagons. Um, he does not have to make a roll for this, which is great. Um, so he opens a fire pot, uh, touches it to arrows that were already smeared with pitch. He fires each into the wagons, which he can fire three per turn thanks to his celerity. The wagons suddenly are hit with pitch. And uh, Eliona, it is your turn. You are at the base of this tree. Cool. Um, I'm going to spend a point for a blood point for claws. Okay. And I'm going to climb the tree. Okay. Uh, I'm stack if me... I can, but. <laughs> uh, so you can split your actions to do so. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to make me a dexterity and, ac and athletics roll. Um, mm -hmm. You're going to be doing this at a, I believe. Is it, do you get a difficulty break or you get more dice with claws? Um, uh, hold on, I got it. Uh, Chris, you remember? Uh, with claws, I don't remember. Sorry, I thought you were going to ask about the multiple attack penalty. No, 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 I, I remember that. It's not a problem. The um, dice pool for climbing increases by two. Perfect. Okay, so uh, it's going to increase by a total of one. You'll have difficulty seven to climb the tree. But splitting the dice pool? So you don't split in this system anymore. You take multiple actions, mm -hmm. and the way mm -hmm. that it works is it goes plus one difficulty, minus one dice for each additional action. Okay, But you cool. do have to declare I, I wasn't sure, so I wanted to make sure I did that before I rolled. <laughs> yeah. So you do have to declare. You could also add a third action and have it be a dodge, if you'd like, or something like that. Nah, I'm good. <laughs> okay, sounds good. All right, so uh, give me that. So you're at a total of plus one dice for the climb at a difficulty of seven. And then your attack roll normally would go at the end of the turn, but because you're the only two up the tree, uh, aside from Bastion, who is just lying in wait, I'm going to let you do the attack this round. Or like this turn, I should say. Cool. That is uh, three successes to climb. You will have no problem. Go ahead and make me an attack roll while you're up there. So uh, it's going to be a dex and brawl, difficulty seven, minus one dice. Okay, so the multiple actions increase the difficulty of each of those actions. Yes, and subtract a die from each. Okay, so two actions take away two dice from both Two, actions. two actions oh. takes away one, so it's every action past the first. Okay, that's not so... No, it's really not. It's just when you have a lot of actions. The other thing is that only, unless you have celerity, only one of your split actions or one of your multiple actions can be offensive. Mm. Mm. If, if you have celerity, yeah, the thing it I, is... I don't quite understand is the whole wait to the end of the turn for the second action thing, but it, I'm sure The it idea that sense. it basically is, is if I'm climbing a tree and attacking you, because it's only about six seconds, I'm climbing the tree first, Everyone else is acting while I'm doing that. And Which then I attack in time. Like it doesn't D &D. necessarily make sense in yeah. like D&D &D phases, but it makes sense yeah, in yeah, logic. Yeah. 
yeah, so, yeah. No, which makes more be, sense. Because than Aliona yeah. is up the tree. And yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So, so I'm just going to give it to her right now. Yeah. 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 And he did not save an action. Three successes. That's three successes. Okay, go ahead and give me your damage. Uh, add plus two dice to the damage. Uh, and a quick reminder, when you're in combat, every die beyond the first gives you an extra dice of damage. So every success beyond the first. Cool. That is the benefit of hitting hard or hitting well. Um, so that means that he does get a chance to soak, though, and he's very good at soaking. So let's mm -hmm. find out. Ooh, there's that fortitude. Oh, wait, he only can soak with fortitude. <gasps> hmm? That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I got three. You got three? Okay. All right. So, uh, lashing out, you are going to slash at him, catching the side of his face. Uh, and what should have been a brilliant blinding attack is merely a permanent scar across his cheek now as he soaks all but one of them. He's going to snarl at you as you climb up and attack. Let's have some fun. All right. Next in the initiative, we have Teresa. All right. So I'm going to split my actions. Uh, Teresa okay, so is going to... Spend a willpower to, main, to yeah. not frenzy. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I'm going to spend so a willpower gonna... to not frenzy. Uh, and okay. then I'm going to command the wolves. So wolves are, arising, are arriving at the edge of the scene. So you mm -hmm. may go ahead. Now, is there a difficulty penalty uh, with that discipline for commanding multiple animals at once? Uh, uh, there is for not uh, current eye contact, uh, but using animal sounds is negative one. Okay, so that uh, will Dangerous command out. is plus one, so if you think that attacking the, the longbow people for is dangerous I think attacking wolves. humans is a dangerous command, yes. Yep, okay, so then plus one difficulty. Okay, so... Uh, so then it is manipulation plus so animal, animal sounds. Uh, however, predatory mammals are at starting at difficulty five. So oh, nice. you so are at a total difficulty of difficulty six. Because they're, oh, pardon me. It is... Prime. Uh, is it a, it's not a deadly command necessarily. It is a dangerous command. So go ahead and give me that at difficulty six. Okay. It's because they already hunger for battle. Exactly. They Manipulation plus battle. animal can. Oh, this is what I wanted. My six of die. Hell yeah. There's going to be three successes. Oh, okay. Uh, Regular so. task for a week or more. <laughs> okay. Here's the deal. I'm going to roll two dice to find out how many wolves have shown up. Yeah. Well, it's not quite a dozen. Eleven wolves <laughs> have shown up. Oh my god. <laughs> and you have commanded them. The wolves are going last in the initiative, but yeah. they're going well in the initiative. Good, good, so, good. Uh, all right, Teresa, uh, did you roll that at a... Oh, pardon me. Did you roll that at plus one difficulty because of your... You know what? I'm going to spend that. Something good happens to forget about that because of your split pools. Oh, I thought it was on the the second. It it's does, all I'm, actions. All things. Sorry, all I actions was... All actions take the penalty. That's what the something good happens. Is for. That's okay. fine. So next on the initiative, you are going to do what? So you're in, uh, then you're... she's going to embrace her frenzy and just attack the nearest longbow. Okay, to the left shooting. or to the right? Uh, where did the arrow come from that you shot with? The arrow came from the right. Okay, so she'll go right. Okay, uh, leaping off the cart, uh, you are going to be able to collide with one of these longbowmen who basically stepped out in front of the wagons. Uh, make me a... Uh, make me a... Well, how are you doing this? You're still in control of your faculties. Okay. So you could theoretically fleshcraft as an attack. Yeah, that's what I was... Okay, that's what was gonna... That was gonna be my next question for Frenzy is like, is it like a blind rage or is it like I can... You've spent a willpower, so you're good until next turn. Okay. Cool. Uh, so fleshcrafting. Yeah, I think uh, Teresa would like to... 
Uh, mm, I mean, yeah, the simple thing is trying to uh, snap the tendons in the wrist to make him not able to shoot. True, that's a good one. His face is right there too, though. Yeah, I could just blend it yeah. all together. Yeah, you know, let's let's blend the face. All right, give beauty me decks and body him. crafts. <laughs> let's beauty blend him. Okay, uh, you are at a minus one die to this and a plus Cap. one difficulty. Cap. Uh, and the standard difficulty for vicissitude is. Difficulty varies depending. I'll say that you are going to be at a difficulty of... Difficulty of seven. Yep. So then minus a dice. A difficulty seven. Uh, oh, wow. I rolled... Wow! I rolled everything was six or lower, except for the ten. So, uh... One success. You only need one success to create a membrane of flesh over his eyes and mouth. Fair. All right. So um, just whoop. Okay, his mouth suddenly becomes a sheath of flesh, and as that occurs, you're going to dip into your frenzy. Reynald, yeah. uh, your wagon is beginning to catch fire. Okay, I get off the wagon. Um, okay. Because are you heading to the nope. to the to the right or the left? Um, Teresa went to the right. Yes. Leona went to the left. Yes. Bastion, who knows? Leona went Bastion to the right as the well because that's where no, the arrow came. I from. was I was on the other side, so it was yeah. right. It was the right side to me, but it was the left side to the path. Because you were ahead of everyone. Yeah, because I'm ahead. Right. I'm going to go to the left, then or at least okay. turn my attention to the left. And uh, okay. how many of these, you said there's eight on either side or? There are four on either side. How spread out are they on the left? Uh, I would say about about 15 feet each. 15 feet each, okay. So I'm going to um, cast, uh, I think it's called Noct cast uh i'm going to i'm going to cast darkness uh i'm going to use nocturne um okay. and uh on the archers there and walk into it and uh okay so you're basically blanketing uh the the left side of the trail going in to try to we'll see how successful i am at that so let's see here okay that's three all right Let's do it. Uh, so that's three successes on that roll. So okay, how large be... does that make it? So it's ten. Anywhere from fifty yards. Each additional success adds ten feet, so thirty feet. So I can get two of them. Okay, um, sounds good. So stepping, it. stepping off. They are going. The two in the middle are going to be blanketed in darkness. And. I uh, walk into it, and um, I want to point out that if anything mm -hmm. has not ever seen this before, it's not just darkness. It's mm -hmm. terrifying the, and wrong. The screaming and sounds of the abyss fill the shadows as you step forward. And Renald will be like, let me show you the absence of God as he walks into it. Okay. Fucking um, dope! One of them is... So, uh, the one that is wounded uh, is going to uh, just scream and attempt to run on his turn. Uh, the other one is actually going to succeed his courage roll with an, like a very good success. But one of them just bails with a fail. Uh, if he can escape, we will find out. Uh, Beautiful. Does that include the uh, minus two dice penalty that he gets for all actions? I don't think that well, counts for virtues, it. but it will count for uh, it will count for his trying to get the hell out. Okay. Uh, all right, Ilyona, what's your or not Ilyona? Um, Teresa, what's your bird doing? Uh, my bird is going to. Uh, the, your bird is now in a in a um, field of darkness now. 
Yeah, so he can't think. He can't see. Uh, I think Burb is going to fly up to see okay. how to try and get out of the darkness. Cause, okay. Uh, so and I'm going to roll for your, your bird to find the way out at a minus two mm -hmm. for you. Uh, your bird is going to actually find its way out fairly yes. easily as the darkness approaches. It just shrieks and flies upward. It's going to be a little unnerved. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and then if it still has a able to do an action, I uh, would like to make a claw attack at the one that's attacking with me. All right. Uh, it has just enough speed to do that. Uh, it may make so at a difficulty of five. Sweet, because he's blind. Yep. That's amazing. Uh, dexterity and brawl, difficulty five. Ooh, that is, that's a fail because I rolled one, two, three, and then eight. Ooh, Ooh okay. okay. The bird that's is going fail. to swoop in, trying to attack, but it had to move too much mm -hmm. to manage this round. Um, all yeah. right, it is the archer's turns. Uh, of the archers that are here, two are are in trouble right now um and that means one two three four five five remain of uh beyond the three that are incapacitated either from having no mouth or being in darkness uh they are uh several of them are going to reach into the brush and then race forward carrying jars of pitch and are going to start to smear them onto the sides of the wagons, causing them to explode in flame. Okay, uh, Felix is going to take his turn at this point and is going to lunge out at one of these men. Um, what is Felix's dice pool for attacks, Chris? Is it five? Uh, six. Six. All right, Felix is going to take an attack at this. Felix did okay. Um, so and he has potence, so that's going to add to that. You know what? Uh, good for, holy crap, good for Felix. Normally the jovial, lighthearted, banterish Felish, or Felix is going to lurch forward from where he was caught off guard and is going to snarl, oh, go to hell, you fucking fiend, and is going to jam his blade through the mouth of the man that smears his wagon with pitch twist the blade and the top of his head is going to pop off like the top of a barrel. I just got six successes on damage with Pose. Holy shit! Go Felix! Yay, Felix! Felix, Felix is a king, man. All right. Uh, not to be outdone, uh, Dominic is going to hurl himself uh, from oh the cart uh, and taking a look around uh, at the one next to him he is going to make an attack. Now he six. is he uses six, six as, as well. well. Okay. And that's going to be two successes. Nice. Okay, so then his damage with a long sword is that, plus his strength is that, plus his potence is that. Holy shit, these ghouls are amazing. Uh, not <laughs> to be outdone, I literally on damage rolled seven, 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 ten. Uh, Fuck yes, and, Dominic. And the one with the pitch is going to drop as well as a blade goes right through the side of his spine. Go, go. Are you all right, my lady? He shouts over at you, Teresa. <sighs> uh, Clara is going to make a strength roll and is going to... Oh my these ghouls are amazing. Um, there's going to be a huge clatter as Clara uh, kicks open the back of the wagon and starts dragging this long wooden box with her as she leaps out of the flaming carriage. This yes. little girl basically carrying about something the size of a coffin, likely where Teresa sleeps. Um, all right, the other archers are going to make their attacks. Uh, which means I am going to aim... Okay, looking at what I can aim at, uh, that is going to be... Okay, I'm going to aim at... Clara's an easy target, so is Felix. So, first shot is going to be at Felix. 
Uh, Felix is going to take a hit. Um, and that is going to be five dice of damage. Chris, roll me a d10 for Soak. A seven. Okay, Felix is going to take one point of lethal damage as an arrow hits him in the upper thigh. He is still able to fight. All right, and now a shot at Clara. Uh, Clara has partial cover, so I will give this at a difficulty seven. Uh, that it does not matter though, because that's still going to be two successes. Um, that is going to be. Oh yes, ghouls can soak lethal damage, can't they? Yeah, yep. I always forgot about that. Yep. Um, so it's going to be roll me um, roll me three dice to see if he actually took that point of damage. Okay. Oh, that that is two ones and a ten. Okay. Uh, Clara is going to take an arrow uh, in the stomach. Actually, well, that's not true. She's going to take an arrow through the kidney that's going to punch out her stomach, and she's going to take three levels of lethal damage. <gasps> no. Um, Felix is actually going to soak, I'm pretty sure, uh, with... So don't worry about Felix. Uh, he takes an arrow in the leg and just snaps it out with his forearm. Uh, all right, and it is the ghoul's turns. Uh, all right, uh, the other ghoul guards, uh, of which there are two remaining, uh, one is going to turn and charge at the at the arrowman at the back. Another is going to see Teresa frenzy uh, and is going to attempt to put the carriage out. Uh, and I am going to spend a drama bomb. Uh, so, uh, Igmar is going to turn around and attempt to put the carriage out, only to have the pitch smear on him and light him afire. He screams as his flesh begins to boil and bubble. Uh, all right, the other one. So, Lucian is going to rush at one of the guards and, or pardon me, at one of the bandits and take an attack and is just by the skin of his teeth going to hit. Uh, that is going to be five dice for damage, six dice for damage. Okay. And that's going to be one, two, three, four, five versus soak. Okay. Uh, he is going to lock himself in combat with this other one uh, at the back of the group, dealing a significant amount of damage to him. Uh, but he, it appears that these soldiers are ghouled. And the retainers turns. Uh, Adam and Ionis are going to leap out and um, they're going to make courage rolls. Uh, oh, Adam is great. Ionis is okay. Uh, and they are going to look at what is happening and uh, fire a couple of arrows. Uh, that's actually really good. Uh, so one shot to the one... There. I apologize for all of the, the dice rolling I'm doing here. Uh, one, two, three, one, two, three. So that is... This is kind of a big fight. <laughs> it kind of is. A, it's a, this is actually... I'll tell you more at the end of the game, but this is like one of the TK, the TPK points. Oh, shit. Yeah, like a lot, of par, a lot of coteries lose characters in this fight. Oh. Okay. Uh, that is going to be... Okay. Versus... Good thing we have the wolves. Uh, yeah, that's going to be dope as hell. Okay, um, two arrows are going to be launched by Adam and Ionis, and they are going to pump into the one at the back that Lucian is in a fight with. Uh, he soaks, but he doesn't soak that much. The two arrows are going to plunge into his chest, and he's going to fall to the ground dead. Another one of their soldiers is dead, which means that they have one, two... Uh, they have... There are two archers that are not presently engaged. That are still up. Uh, down there, the non-combatants. Um, um, Clara is going to attempt to move the box. Cece is trying to help her and is screaming, Drop the box! Drop the box! Just run! I will not leave him. She says, uh, all right, Wolfar is going to draw a bow back from the tree that he is in and is going to fire down into Teresa. 
Uh, Teresa, I think you need to make me a soak roll. Yeah. Make... Okay. Uh -oh. You know what? Not a particularly good one, though. Well, my dice have been real finicky. Come on, bookworm dice. Oh my god. A difficulty six? Difficulty six. Two. Um, an arrow is going to catch you in the breast and shatter against your collarbone. <sighs> you take no damage from that. Oh, God, that nice. was a good shot, too. Um, mm, mm. Uh, and then he's going to use his overwatch to, I guess, just fire at anybody who can. And it is the wolves' turn. Uh, there are 11 wolves. So um, I'm going to say that the wolves uh, count as solid. Oh, you have the stats? Well, I have the stats. So there's wolves, and then there's also, um, they have uh, swarm stats for, like, a bunch of animals, including wild dogs slash wolves. Okay, let's use those then. Perfect. Where would you like to aim those? So there are there are two archers at the back of the convoy that, that have not... That aren't, yeah. Okay, so uh, go ahead and make me a swarm roll against them because they haven't had a chance to um, to take the dodge action yet. They were not expecting cool. wolves. Uh, no. Um, okay, so if the... And also if the animals cause three or more health levels of damage before soak, characters are knocked down and overrun. That sounds great. Right? All right so um, they, it doesn't say... I'm assuming I make just a regular... Like, make a regular attack roll with their stats. It would be Dex and Brawl. Okay. Oh, nice. Nice, nice, nice. Oh, that's... That's... That's four successes. And how many successes before they get knocked down? Uh, well, it's, it's, um, three more health levels of damage. Oh, okay. All right. So what you're going to do soaking. is roll their damage rating plus three. Okay. Damage, damage, uh, four dice. Okay. So seven. All right. Oh, wait, no, no, wait. The, um, that's four dice lethal. Uh, the damage is, the damage number says six actually. So, uh. So yeah. Uh, so roll nine. Yeah, there we go. Uh, do one subtract damage? Uh, yes, they do. Cat. Uh, that is unfortunate. I rolled two of them, so that's only going to be two points of damage. Two points of damage. All right, that's going <laughs> yep. to tear in. Uh, the wolves are basically going to be completely keeping that one occupied, though. So I Perfect. have, I will use my green dice to occupy that guy. I'm just going to put it on top of him. Um, all right. So top of the initiative again, we have Bastion. Bastion, you are up on the branches. What do you do? All right. I'm on the other side of the, I'm right next to the, I believe the it was fight. An, it was a wolf. Uh, what was his name? Wolfgar? You went Wolfgar? to the side with Mitru. With Mitru. So you are up in the tree, the same tree that Eliona is. You are around the back of him, and she is on the front of him. And... Mm, how is he anchored to the tree? He's just kind of standing in He's there? He's just standing on a large branch. I'm going to, well, it had to happen eventually. Um, tackle him off of the tree while sinking okay. my teeth into him. Okay. So it's going to be, it's going to be a, um, it's going to be a grapple roll, then a bite roll. Okay. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do the grapple roll first. Uh, what I'm going to say it is um, go ahead and make me a brawl and dexterity roll. Uh, at a difficulty of five? I'll spend willpower. You can only spend one willpower per turn? Yes. Mm, I will not uh, spend willpower. And because you're doing multiple, don't forget that actually that'll 
But yeah, five's a good difficulty for this because he can't see you. Uh, but subtract one die because of multiple actions. All right, difficulty five. Three. Yep. Three, okay. So uh, what we're going to do right now, you're going to impact him. Can you please make me a strength roll? just to see, so you've grappled him. Let's see whether or not that is enough to throw him over. So make me a strength roll, difficulty six. All right. Oh, Come don't on. worry about it. I, you get one success, you're good. I rolled many ones. All right. Oh, rolled many ones as well, but I got, this is just to see if I can knock him off. This is to see if you can knock oh, him off. Oh, that's why it's contested. Yeah, two. Yeah. Two, all right. Uh, so, Yona, you scratch him in the face, and suddenly Bastion comes out of nowhere, tackling him out of the tree. They tumble to the ground in a hard lump. They're not quite high enough that I'm going to say that you're going to need soak rolls to fall out. You know what? Screw it. You're probably about 20 feet up in the air. Both of you make me a stamina roll, me and you. I He's fine. use He's fine. him to break my fall. I'll give you the stamina roll at a difficulty five. All right. <laughs> Ooh, poor stamina. Ooh, <laughs> five, five, and six. Okay. Uh, well, you're fine. Uh, and you are going to take your second action. Let's do the bite maneuver. So the way this is going to work. Now, are you trying to drink or are you trying to do aggravated damage with your teeth? Aggravated damage. Perfect. That makes my life way easier. Okay, so... So dex plus brawl plus one? Plus one dice or plus one difficulty? It just Wait. says plus one. So, so it's plus dice. one difficulty because it's awkward because you have a small mouth. Oh, uh, so it's, it, it's actually plus one to his dice pool. Uh, the difficulty is, is normal and it's plus one uh, damage. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So what you're going to do is because it's part of a multiple action, you are going to roll dex plus brawl, period, at a difficulty of seven. All right. And now I will spend the willpower. <laughs> okay, that sounds fine. Willpower, go. So once again, technically this would happen, like your second attack would happen at the end of the scene, or at the end of the turn, but I'm just going to play it fast and loose today. Uh, so four, uh, I want you to give me strength plus three damage. Oh, pardon me, strength plus four damage. So whatever your strength is, Add four dice, roll them against a difficulty of six. All right, I haven't spent blood this turn, so I'm gonna pump my strength up to 10. Okay. Wait, plus four? Plus four dice, yes. 14? Yep. Okay. You got, it's because you got more successes than you needed to hit. Oh, right, and, they roll And over. the fangs do plus one, plus one ag. Uh, so, uh, I'm going to spend a point of blood to automatically soak, because uh, this is going to suck. And what's the difficulty? Fortitude, for the win. <laughs> uh, difficulty is going to be six. Eight. Nine. Hey. Okay. Oh, boy. Nine. That is a hell of a wound you just gave him. Holy shit. Um, where are you biting him? I came at him from, tackled him from behind. Yeah, so, so you collapsed like, out of the tree? I and I was on the same branch as him before I broke of his gate. Tackled him from behind so his front was falling forward towards the ground and mm -hmm. then tore at the side of his neck as we fell. All right, sounds good. As you fall, you hit the ground, you tear a strip out of his throat and back, wounding him incredibly. I'm going to spend uh, a hurt them more, uh, and he is going to slam his elbow back in rage, uh, breaking your grasp, and is going to snarl at you. This isn't over. Uh, and I'm going to spend my last hurt them more and have him use Protean to turn into a bat and fly away. <laughs> with his one remaining health box. Yo, Skullcow! 
Holy crap. Holy shit. You Surviving, you took three him. hurt the moors, just so you know. Fuck, yes, the go. Not over. That's amazing. It is not over yet. All right, so he is in with 10 strength. Who is next? <laughs> he, well, you're wiry, right? Um, yeah. All right, Aliona, you see your sire, question mark, uh, fly off into the night. What do you do? Uh, there are still many combatants on the field, as well as Wolfar and the tree across the way. Um, Eliona will will take half a second to just watch her, her sire, her mentor, the one who claimed her, however she decides to refer to him. Um, watch him fly off, chuckle, and just go, now who's the weakling? And <laughs> grab, um, actually... When Bastion did that, did the fire pot fall out of the tree? Uh, the coal. You know what? I'm gonna roll. I'm gonna roll a dice. So on a on an eight or higher, it is still in the tree. Uh, it it is tipped over and is starting to rain coals down onto the brush. It could be right. Cool. It's still. Um. <laughs> This might be super dumb, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, I would like to pick up the brazier and chuck it at the other tree. Okay, I want you to make me a rot check roll. So give me a courage roll. Yep. Yep. Mm, that is four successes. Four successes. All right, you pick it up. And what I want you to do is make me a dexterity and athletics roll. I'll give this to you at a difficulty of eight. Okay. Uh, that's, I can count. I'm spending a willpower. Okay. That is four successes, or five with the willpower at difficulty eight. Oh, God. Give me... You said five successes? I did. Yeah, I rolled Okay, give me 10 dice, 10 dice of coal damage. <laughs> or pardon me, what's your strength? Oh, yeah, my my strength is less. It's 4. <laughs> okay, so give me 9 dice of coal damage. Okay, I will reroll that. <laughs> okay. Difficulty six for that one? Yeah. Uh, that is four successes. Okay. Well, I got one on my soak. Um, all right. You hurl the coal pot into the tree across the way. And here's the problem with that. There, there are a couple of problems happening here. The first is the tree is not going to catch fire. It, as I said, it is muddy. It has been raining. However, Wolfar was there as a backup strategy and had on him several tar arrows that were pre-coated in tar. <laughs> they are going to ignite as he is holding them. And he is going to scream and catch fire. Suddenly there is a burning man in the trees. Whoops. We started Burning Man way before it's time, guys. You did? All right. Uh, that was a beautiful hit. You're going to hear the sound of that clay pot shatter and then just <laughs> from the other tree. All right, Teresa, it's your turn. Okay. Uh, so um, uh, I'm friends in. I'm friends in. You're friends uh, can, I still, can I still spend blood to buff yes. stats? Perfect. Uh, yes, I'm going to spend th three blood to buff my strength index a little bit more. The man in front of you is screaming, mm -hmm. you assume, into his mouth. The flesh over his lips is blowing like a bubble. i like to take a bite and rip his throat out, please. Absolutely. Make me a dex and brawl roll. Difficulty five. <laughs> uh, plus one dice. Yes. Okay, so dex and brawl. So dex is... I got... Eight, then brawl is three plus one. Okay. Six, 
Six, eh? I rolled two ones in there. What are the ones? Okay. Two, four, six successes. Six successes. All right. Give me a give me a strength plus five. Aggravated damage. Strength plus six. Okay. I have. Six plus six, okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Not as great on my damage. I wrote a lot of twos and threes. So that's not fun. Uh, uh, four successes. You tear his throat out. His esophagus trails behind him like a limp noodle as you pull it out, tearing his flesh and meat. He drops to the ground, his fingers still trying to thumb through the membrane of his mouth. And his last scream resonates out the hollow in the throat you just made. Renald, you are inside of the darkness. One of the men inside of there screams and attempts to run, stumbling down. The other one managed to hold his courage, but he takes a deep breath of the darkness and starts to turn pale. He's failed his first soak roll. What do you do? That's tricky. Um, so, seeing all the fire and everything through there, um, no, you know what? They got it. They got it. I'm going to go up to the one who's uh, starting to um, suffocate. Suffocate. And, uh, you know what? Uh, Renald is uh, going to finish him off. It's, okay. Um, I'm going thirsty? to use... Uh, not to, really, actually. He doesn't use a lot of blood. But you know what? Let's do it. Yeah. Okay. Sure. You feel your fangs sink into his throat. No. The glory no, of blood rolls through I, I, your tongue. I, what do you... I want to actually, like, whisper to him from Please? somewhere within this darkness beforehand. Just like, there is no god in here. And then finish him off. Beautiful. He goes slack in your hand while the other one tries to claw his way out of the darkness. But as he does, you can see his hand pushes into the mud, the other one, as he starts to claw his way out of your darkness. But something dark reaches around his ankle and slowly drags him through, his nails leaving a rents in the wet earth. There is no escape. And as this occurs and the melee continues, in the distance, you hear the sound of hoofbeats. Many sets of hoofbeats headed this way. A troop of soldiers comes into view from the way that you came from, followed by an enclosed wagon. They ride up next to the flaming carriages and someone inside of the wagon raises a hand and gestures. The soldiers, the men at arms, draw their pikes and begin launching themselves into the fray. They stab and skewer your, your assailants. They cut them down without mercy, hacking their limbs off, gutting them with deliberate strokes meant to cripple, to incapacitate, but not necessarily exsanguinate. As the last of these assailants falls to the ground, dead. You will regain your composure, Teresa, having stifled 
your rage inside of that dead man. Bastion, there are many fallen soldiers here to slake your thirst on. Well, Teresa too. <laughs> mm-hmm. And as you slake your thirst, the covered wagon rolls forward. And Teresa, as you raise your blood-soaked face, you are going to recognize an insignia on a carriage. A gloved hand reaches out and waves at you all. And a figure stands and steps forth from the carriage, unearthly beautiful, with long flowing pale hair and a perfect face. The face of a noble, almost androgynous, looks out at you. Are you quite all right? My child. The man smiles at you, Teresa. And you recognize your sire, Micah Vikos. I'm all right now. Good. I'm sorry that it took me a while to reach you. You always did have impeccable timing. I had a dream about this. Hello, companions. He smiles. It appears you seem to be in a bit of dire straits. Men, secure the perimeter, please. Yes, sir. The soldiers push into the woods, making sure to clear things. Is there anything I can do to help in this moment, Teresa? Can you take the box in your carriage, please? Of course. See to... He gestures to Clara. Dominic lifts her, holding the arrow in her stomach. My lady, she, if you have blood to spare. Yes, Clara. I saved it. You did, you did very well. You did very well, and she will, she'll take her, kind of, let her kind of collapse into her. She'll start petting her hair, and then she will rip open a, a vein and almost at a wrist, but almost like holding her head, like she's almost like cupping her to her breast. She will feed her from her wrist. Perfect. As you are doing that, Micah turns to the rest of your companions. I'm happy to see that you are all alright. I'm Micah Vikos, Teresa's sire, a fellow of a void. Please, accept my hospitality. I would be happy to help get you to where you're going. Your hospitality is most welcome. If you'll excuse me, though, I just need a moment. I'm going to attend to Carl. As long as you need. Men, see to the wounded. The man-at-arms move around and collect the wounded that exist. Nicolae and Bolier are absolutely dead. So is Peter. All in all, three of the ghouls are incapacitated with damage. Only Igmar and Lucian are largely without damage. Carl is badly wounded, but looks up at you with a smile. Good job, my lord. You showed them the darkness of hell. (laughs) 
it's not your time to go see God yet. Come. And I'm just going to feed him right out of my wrist. I'm going to use the dagger. Beautiful. Just... And as you're feeding him, Micah takes a step out, looks around the field, and looks over at Eliona and Bastion. Bastion, you look at him, and you are going to see the radiance and resplendor of one of the angels blazing around him. His destiny connects to yours, and his destiny stretches on and on. This creature will have a profound effect on the world. And as he looks at you, he is going to lock eyes with you. Your burning carriages blazing in the darkness is going to smile sweetly. I hadn't assumed I would see your like again. And as he smiles, the wagons continue to burn to embers. And we will find out where your journey takes you next time on the Transylvania Chronicles. Because that's what we're calling game for tonight. Ah! <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I hope you guys had some fun with that. Uh, that combat oh. is rough. Literally, that there's eight of them. Um, they, they set fire to your wagons, immediately burn all your shit. They burn all your money. Don't forget, money can be burned in this era. Uh, not mm. all of our money. Depends on who kept theirs on them. It was portioned That's out. That's fair. That's fair. Well, we're going to have to see how that goes. Um, they deliberately burn your stuff. I can't believe you guys fought me true and almost killed him. <laughs> that was go Cal, go Jack. Like, right. That was a beautiful was tag team. <laughs> it's like it's the here comes the Malkavian with the steel chair. <laughs> oh God. Yeah, hundred percent. Oh. Um. Uh, um. So, uh, Eliona was was basically in the tree until right at the end there. Um. Mm -hmm. But I want to just make sure that I can also go feed and I will. Feed oh on, yeah, everybody on the, can feed to full the on these guys. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Even after feeding their ghouls. Even after feeding your ghouls, because ghouls can only hold so much. Uh, now, uh, everybody who killed someone, I want you to make me a humanity check at difficulty, uh, oh, pardon me, a uh, conscience roll. Uh, I'm going to say at difficulty of five, because it was self-defense. I rolled two fours, baby! Two so what is your, what, what's your uh, conscience at? Or what, pardon me, what's your two. humanity at? My humanity's at six, but my conscience is at two. Okay. Your humanity's at five now. Um, I'm not... Don't have to do oh, my sorry. other stats first. Yeah. You can do whichever you want. So you're going to lose a dot. You're going to degenerate. Yeah. Uh, Eliona. Yeah. I got one success on my one die of humanity five. <laughs> okay. You're like, oh, I wish I hadn't killed... I wish I... Actually, you didn't actually kill anybody. You just lit no, some people on fire. That's true. I did set someone on fire. So I'll, I'll count that as partial arson. Um, Ronald, you succeeded. Only a little arson as a treat. Yeah, as a treat. Successes. Yep. Perfect. And Bastien. Oh, so man. Bastien, you are at a again. plus two difficulty. <laughs> um, but you did attempted murder. So uh, that's going to be difficulty of five. What Moida? He's fine. Did you lose? He flew away like a bat. Uh, difficulty five. <laughs> yeah. Minus two. Guys, because... I have not succeeded. I have the not succeeded a single me. humanity check. The visions will guilt trip you, so you have three dice to roll. Mm hmm. I have not succeeded. Come on. I spend willpower. No, you can't. Ooh, nine, nine, one. Okay, do that's one success. Take away on this too. They do. They do. Um, so you, mm. that's still one success. Guys, oh, right. you guys are all like, more need. human than me. So I'm Bastion is going human. to kind of just have this moment where he's like, "Wow, if they hadn't stepped up, there wouldn't have been none." This is unfortunate. I feel bad about this fight, but it will like honestly, I didn't kill him. Perfect. All right, should so folks, have. that's yeah, I should nerf you are the Dark Knight. Um, perfect. <laughs> Um, hey folks, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this episode of uh, the Transylvania Chronicles. Uh, we'll be back on the 28th of this month, and then we'll be running pretty much normally, unless we have a special event or something like that from here on in. 
Um, but I have some plans I need to go do. Um, which are going to be great. And it gives me more time to read the book and to make sure that everything is um, is going according to plan. Uh, does anybody have anything they want to say before we start heading out? This was so fun. It's so Yo, good. Your wolves ate a bunch of people. Is it the 28th yet? Is it the 28th yet? <laughs> oh, God. For a brief time, Bastion's uh, one strength was 10. Yeah, I got my strength yep. up to seven and then my decks up to eight it was nice hey i'm really glad that we got so many people out here enjoying vampire and enjoying the world of darkness i know a lot of you who are watching this uh come from our D D content and our other like indie content so welcome this is uh this is a different part of role playing for a lot of you and i hope you're enjoying it it's definitely uh, definitely atmospheric and definitely a lot of fun and i couldn't ask for a better cast so thanks so much for being here uh, if you want to join us again for more World of Darkness, come back on Saturday night for the first episode of Season 3, Book 3, technically, of Mage the Ascension, the Victorian Age. It's kind of like this, but like 800 years in the future. Um, so it's going to be a hell of a lot of, or 700 years in the and future. And a little it's less gonna... bitey. And You don't know. M you know, with Yet, Christine and Amy. Yet, so far. <laughs> with Christine That's and Amy. True. We're going to, it's, it's, it's fine. It's good. Aren't <laughs> Cal and Chris, aren't Christine and Amy? <laughs> I can't. I don't. I don't. I don't it's, see it's it. Acting. It's, right? it's Orange Heroes is acting. It's true. <laughs> uh, hey, if you like what we do here, though, consider joining our Patreon. It's a great way to support the channel, and the more numbers we get there, honestly, the easier it is to approve new projects and do wild new stuff uh old gods of appalachia is coming this month again, uh, as well as a new episode of Hunter the Vigil that I have to edit tonight just tons of content uh please support us it's a great way to keep the channel going and to make me happy uh i really do appreciate everybody who's on there like my mom i really appreciate you mom thanks for being a divine producer uh demonic producers we've got precarious shulton and cologne occurred uh or should i call you uh sui R a curb I love it i love that i got that past you guys uh wizards of the patreon you never uh, the felt it um, but then I dealt it. Uh, the Wizards of the Patreon are Tammy the Forever Cleric, the Ink Goblin, and Sorcerer Sanguine, who are just the most magical people. And our High Council of the Patreon is Taryn, Dustin, Amberthist, Raven with Bobbles, Karasha, Urkhart, Chef Ella Death, Larouk, Mike Baxter, and Oridian. Thanks so much for being with us. Uh, we'll see you next time. Uh, until then, um, blah. Good night, everybody. You guys had fun. Hey. Oh, and also take six XP. Whoa! Ooh, the chat bought you four, and I gave you included. two. Nice. Everything included. So and. Jeez. Jeez. Yeah, many XP. Uh, all right, and with that, we'll see you later, folks. Have a great night. Good night. <laughs>